Welcome to the Fantasy Audiobook. American Comics. I Became Tony's Younger Brother. Chapter 61. The SUV that had already been prepared rushed out of the warehouse immediately, rampaging on the road at the fastest speed, and every intersection must be a green light. After a few dozen seconds, the convoy stopped in front of a narrow alley. Natasha was the first to get out of the car with a shotgun in hand, and squatted against the wall. The muzzle of the gun was immediately aimed at the surrounding places where people might hide, and her thumb was on the trigger, ready to be pulled at any time. A few strands of pink hair emerged from under the hood, which looked particularly eye-catching on the black clothes. Thirty combat team members squatted in a row along the walls on both sides, crossing each other, and the thumping footsteps echoed in the alley. Many people stuck out their heads out of curiosity when they heard the movement, and after seeing the fully armed combatants below, they obediently covered their mouths and disappeared through the window. It has been exposed, and Natasha gave instructions through the headset. One group is responsible for covering, and the second group and three groups will attack with me. Receive. X3. Everyone stood up and walked quickly along the wall. Walking under building no. 15, Natasha pressed against the wall and growled, load the shock bomb. Several people immediately walked out of the team and raised their guns to aim at the window. Several grenades smashed into the glass and flew into the room. Crack, bang, crack, bang, a humming roar echoed throughout the building. Outside the back door, Natasha shot twice to break the lock, kicked open the door, and the combatants behind her filed in. Lay down your weapon, lay down your weapon, lay down your weapon. Violent gunshots spread to the street, and the crowd instantly became commotion, screaming and fleeing in all directions. There's someone shooting over there, run. Sound of gunfire, quickly find a place to hide. Gangster, go. Axel and his men immediately raised their vigilance, sprinted to the wall, and hid behind the bunker. Sharp eyes glanced back and forth around him, his hands on the trigger under the blanket, ready to fire at any time. Haytham crouched behind the wall, his hand on the suitcase. Call, 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 the sound of heavy breathing echoed in his ears, and his palms were sweating. In the command room, Luck put his feet down and looked serious, staring at the big screen. The first floor is safe, no targets found. The second floor is safe, no target found. The third floor, find the target on the fourth floor, repeat, find the target on the fourth floor. In the bedroom, gray-haired Wilson was lying peacefully on the bed, with several pill bottles scattered on the floor. Natasha put her hand on his neck, and said after a while, dead. Hearing the death of the target, there was a sound of exhalation in the channel, and the battle was over. Hill turned to Locke and said, let them withdraw. Among the two clues, Wilson himself is undoubtedly the fastest and most important one. Now that the person is dead, it means that they can only spend a lot of time on the lady in the cup. No, there is actually another one. Lark said, let them evacuate to the abandoned warehouse first and be on standby at any time. It is good. Hill immediately asked everyone to retreat and the things in the room will be taken over by S.H.I.E.L.D. later. Lark had no problem with this. He didn't think there would be any unexpected gains. Putting away the phone, Lark got up and left the command room. He was going to find Tony and ask if the person who recruited the four beauties had been found. There are also people from F1 officials, no one came to inquire about the situation when such a big assassination happened last night, it is really wrong. Four leopards and one beautiful lawn, the scene was the same as in the morning, except that the tennis ball was replaced by a flying saucer. Rucker seriously doubts whether Pepper has mastered some secret weapon, such as, leopard mint. Otherwise, why the four big ones who have always been arrogant, have been clinging to her since morning till now. Locke waved. Abau, come to me. Ow, hearing someone calling him, Abau turned around subconsciously and instantly exposed the frisbee. The big cat saw the right moment, kicked off his legs, and hit a headbutt in the air. Boom, lark, hiss, it hurts to hear. Abau was knocked to the ground, his legs were in the air, his tongue was hanging out, and his eyelids were turned upside down. Ah, I'm dead. Pepper possessed his play spirit, stepped forward and hugged its head, took the opportunity to rub it hard, and cried in his mouth. Leopard, why is your nose so long? The paw patted her leg. I'm sorry to say something wrong, Leopard, why is your nose so round? Abau opened his eyes with a, wow, 
licked her face with his big tongue, and Malu got up and escaped from the claws. After running to Locke's side, he switched back to the arrogant state. Locke wanted to reach out and touch him, but he didn't give it up, so angry that his teeth itched. See how I deal with you when I go back. Luck looked towards the lawn, leaned over to Abao, and asked in a low voice. Abao, tell me quickly, why you like to cling to Pepper so much today? Abao also looked at the direction of the lawn, and sat down beside Locke with his butt twisted, with his big head raised. Ow, what, you already have three wives, and you still want one. You're really too much, I've never seen someone as brazen as you. Ow, cough, cough, cough. Lack coughed as he choked on his own saliva. This news is too exciting, no, I need to confirm it again. He quietly looked around again, hugged Abeo's head, and his tongue was trembling. You really didn't lie to me. You don't believe me. Abao flicked his tail and hit him on the back, wow. I bought it. It turned out to be true. Locke was completely shocked now. Flat shoes, very sour drinks, which animals like, strange things have been strung together all of a sudden during this period. He opened his mouth wide and stared blankly at Pepper who was playing with the leopard on the lawn, not knowing what to say for a moment. Tony is going to be a dad. He remained silent. Abao thought that his new wife was ruined. He raised his butt angrily, banged his head on Locke's chest, and rubbed it crazily. Ah, oh, being tickled, Locke couldn't help laughing, he put his hands on his chest and tried to push the big guy away. Ha ha, it's ticklish. Ah bow, get up and drive. I have not forgotten your promise to your wife. I will summon you when I get back to New York. When he heard that there was something going on, Abao stopped his movements instantly, and ran behind Locke obediently, with his big head against his back, trying to push Locke up. Seeing color and righteousness is good for Leopard. At this time, Tony came out of the hall wearing a black and red tights. It was originally a sharp weapon to highlight the majestic figure of a man, but when it was placed on him, it was not only extremely ugly, but also completely exposed the flaws in his body. You are so overwhelmed. Locke and Abao looked at him in complete shock, dumbfounded. Seeing their expressions, Tony thought they were overwhelmed by his stalwart figure, and subconsciously raised his head up, revealing the sweatband on his forehead. Fight back. He looked down at Luck with a condescending look, and then strode towards the apron. In the distance, Stark Three is landing. In the same place, Locke and Abao looked at each other, and couldn't help laughing anymore. He also learned to make some animal sounds. Ha ha, ha ha, ouch, ouch, ah, ah. Seeing his outfit, Pepper screamed, and ran to hold his hand, oh my god. What's wrong with you, Tony, who picked out the clothes for you? The three behind glanced at each other, and covered their heads with their paws. Spicy eyes. At this time, no matter how slow Tony was in aesthetics, he knew that he was in a big embarrassment. He roared to the sky and let out an unwilling roar. Happy, coming, coming, boss. Happy, who will never lose weight, rushed out from nowhere with a bathrobe in his hand, and quickly put it on for his boss. She also tied it up very considerately for him, trying to cover his, red and black skin, as much as possible. Tony said nothing, pressed his collar with both hands, and walked silently to meet his fitness instructor. The back stretches very long on the ground. Very long. Life is like waves, ups and downs. The hatch opened, and Hawkeye made a shocking appearance, with a sleeveless vest and big trousers, and his arms were full of muscle. Tony, the wind is very noisy today. Just when he was hesitating whether to ask the priest to check his fortune, Pepper, a kind and considerate person, descended from the sky on colorful auspicious clouds and rescued him from the abyss. A deep kiss. Elbow, come into the house with me. Eagle eye. W. Backquote. Happy. W. Backquote. Lark. W. Backquote. Hello. Where's the fitness trainer you promised? Why are you leaving? Hawkeye opened his mouth wide, his hands in the air with no place to rest. Don't look, he won't be able to come out for a while. Locke walked over and interrupted his unreasonable association. It's you, aren't you supervising work at Stark? Why are you here? With all the, combat students, gone, it stands to reason that the most suitable place for Hawkeye is the Stark Security Department. However, the idea of letting local agents into one's own security team is not reliable at all. In the end, everyone unanimously decided, 
mainly because Harpy strongly recommended it, and then Hawkeye liked to mention the job of supervisor. A few months later, he was now accustomed to his current identity. He calmly called out, boss, and moved out of the way, revealing the cabin full of fitness equipment. The corners of Locke's mouth twitched, the man's determination to win, he couldn't even wait for a day. It's okay to come. Natasha just arrived this morning and is on a mission. Are you interested in playing? Happiness comes too fast, like a tornado. Hawkeye was still sighing for a second that he had to make soy sauce again, but he didn't expect the pie to fall from the sky in the next second. Yes, too, too, he rushed to agree. God knows, he had been so idle these past few months that his body was almost rusty. Finally. I, Eagle Eye, Clint Barton, back out of the arena. Happy, take him to get the equipment. Happy looked at Hawkeye's muscles getting bigger and stronger, and remembered the fear of being dominated by him before, swallowed quietly, and said. Okay, boss, entering the command room, whether it was the large screen on the wall, the intelligence agents walking back and forth, or the crackling keyboard, everything made Hawkeye feel so familiar. Got home. After many months, many intelligence officers saw him again and couldn't help but say hello. Haven't seen you for a long time. Haven't seen you for a long time. Long time no see. Hawkeye greeted each other in return, the smile on his face looking extremely friendly. After exchanging warm greetings with Hill for a while, Hawkeye put on his equipment and was led by a man in a black suit to join Natasha. Because he didn't know in advance that he would come, Lark naturally didn't prepare a bow and arrow, but as long as he could shoot, it was the same for Hawkeye. He is Hawkeye, not Hawkbow. Luck stood there for a while before he remembered that he seemed to have something to do with Tony when he came out. Forget it, ask Jarvis too. Lark returned to the command room. Jarvis, have you found out who sent the message to them, the four racing babies? After a while, a coordinate with a flashing red dot appeared on the phone. Boss, the other party is very cautious, and the messages sent are all encrypted. I tracked all the way and finally locked in this address. Locke zoomed in on the map, and immediately his eyes froze, Monte Carlo Port. Commander Hill, which port is the place where Assel said Wilson often went to vent his anger? Port of Monte Carlo. Locke handed over the phone, narrowing his eyes slightly, it seems that we will know the true identity of our friend soon. The weather in Monaco is changeable, the sky is still clear at noon, and the sun is like fire. As the sun set, a strong wind suddenly blew up between the sky and the earth, a few dark clouds floated over, and the raindrops hit the ground with crackling sounds. In a corner of the dark, dilapidated port, several containers formed a circle on the ground. Even the rain curtain could not block the neon light above them, and the faint sound of melancholy could be heard. A cargo ship was parked a few hundred meters away. The paint was peeling and the name on it was hard to read. A few guys dressed as gangsters huddled under the iron sheet and kept looking in a certain direction. After a while, two snow-white lights pierced the darkness, and a van drove over and parked at the pier. The goods are here. The gangster was shocked, threw away his cigarettes, and split into two groups. Two of them returned to the control room, while the others opened their umbrellas and faced the heavy rain, with bulging bags on their waists. The passenger door opened, and a burly bald man got down cursing, and walked towards the rear of the car with a few gangsters. This weather, it's raining now, Shet. He reluctantly opened the carriage, pressed the switch, the lights came on, and there were five large wooden boxes lying side by side inside. With a stern face, he ordered solemnly, My actions should be quicker, the boss said that this batch of goods must be sent out before dawn. No, clear, a few gangsters threw away their umbrellas and jumped into the carriage, tested the weight, pulled a piece of rain cloth over it, and lifted the wooden box out in groups of two. When I got out of the car, my feet hit the ground and I stumbled. The box turned over and a black cup wrapped in yellow silk fell out. The two gangsters were so frightened that their ghosts froze. Before the bald man saw it, they immediately picked up the things, put them back, and covered them with a rain cloth. Back and forth twice, and soon there was only the last wooden box left. At this time, there was light again in the dark night, and a black Audi drove in and parked next to the truck. Through the lights inside the car, one can recognize the transport man who was in the hotel that night. The bald man immediately threw away the cigarette, trotted over, propped his umbrella on the roof of the car, 
His back was soon wet, he said flatteringly. Boss, why are you here? Secretly, the company often does some illegal business, in order to avoid being caught on the spot. The boss, also known as the transportation man, usually does not come to the scene in person, and leaves it to the people below to handle it. He only needs to ensure that the goods and payments are correct. The transport man tore off his collar irritably, staring at the loading boy, his right eyelid kept twitching. I always feel that something is not right. You tell them to hurry up and don't stop after they are installed. Send them away immediately. Understood, I'll do it right now. After giving the instructions, the transport man still felt uncomfortable. The space inside the car was so small and stuffy that it was almost suffocating. He waved his hand to drive the bald man away, and immediately ordered the driver. Drive to the nightclub. The driver replied, Okay, boss. The car started, made seven turns and eight turns at the pier, and finally drove into the neon area. Several containers are arranged in a circle, and adjacent parts are opened up, modified, reinforced, and painted with building materials. There are huge floor-to-ceiling glass on all sides in the middle, warm lighting, exquisite decoration, and a tall woman walking back and forth with a wine glass. Revealed in two words, elegance. Seeing the transportation man, several women's eyes lit up, and they immediately surrounded him, acting coquettishly and seductively, and all came into battle. Crack, thunder flashed across the sky, leaving several shadows on the top of the container. The propeller rotated at a high speed, the small drone adjusted its posture, and a small black dot flew out, sticking to the collar of the transport man without a trace. Oh, Mr. Luther, long time no see. Did you miss us? Think, I miss you guys so much, come on quickly. Crackling, um, ah. The sound of the keyboard in the command room suddenly stopped, the male staff stared at the screen and fell into thought, and the female staff also stared at the screen, lost in thought. This movement, is really big. It happened that Iceberg Beauty Hill went to the bathroom, but no one present turned down the volume. After two minutes, the sound stopped suddenly. The male staff breathed a sigh of relief, while the female staff showed disdain. Satisfied, the transport man put on his clothes and walked down the corridor to the last room. Boom. A charming voice came from inside, come in. The transport man pushed open the door. In a room with light blue decoration style, a beautiful woman with a graceful figure and a black suit is sitting on an office chair. Smelling the smell of the transport man, she frowned slightly, how many times have I told you not to go to them? Why don't you focus this energy on your girlfriend? After being scolded, the transport man was not angry, but acted like a good boy. He walked behind the beautiful woman and squeezed her shoulders diligently. Sister, I know I was wrong, and I will never dare again. You, the beautiful woman sighed, he had said this sentence countless times, each time it was nonsense, and he would forget it after a while. She rubbed her head, took out a document and threw it on the table, a group of people raided Wilson's residence this afternoon, sent by Stark. He was caught, the transport man exclaimed, dead, the beautiful woman said calmly, without any wavering in her tone, as if she had already predicted the outcome. Even if you're dead, it's really a dream to still want to take Angina away. The transport man sneered, picked up the file and collapsed on the sofa, extremely lazy. The case was solved, it turned out that he was trapped by love and wanted to redeem himself. Tony looked strange in the command room. With this little money, you can be blessed with many, Orans, why hang yourself on a tree? You can't even do this math problem, you scumbag. Oh, I'm too old to lift a knife. Tony continued to monitor, with great interest in what was coming next. After reading for a while, the transportation man suddenly said, Sister, you said that Stark lives in the hotel owned by the boss, why did you ask us to make such a big detour to set him up, it would be better if we just planted bombs in the hotel. The beautiful woman was furious, picked up the glass and threw it on him, stood up and opened the door, saw that no one outside was relieved, and angrily scolded, how many times have I told you, don't mention the word boss outside, be careful to get into trouble. The transport man took the cup in a panic, seeing that the beautiful woman was really angry, he shut up obediently, and curled up on the sofa. Okay, okay, okay. The room fell into silence, and the pattering raindrops hit the container, making people irritable. Know who is behind the scenes, everything is simple. 
Lark directly asked Jarvis to search for the green man's location. When he looked at his location, he found that the good guy was also on his way to the port. So what are you waiting for? Everyone goes out. Lark also got on a plane to meet the boss behind the scenes. No injustice, no enmity, why do you want to kill me? Two cars protected the Rolls Royce as they sped through the rainy night. It was dark outside the window, and no light could be seen. The green man sat in the back seat, feeling the delicate and soft touch of the leather seat with his fingers. Arrived at the port, ten security guards got out of the car first and guarded the surroundings. The driver opened the umbrella and the green man got out of the car. He looked around and walked into the container. The siblings who just received the news hurried out to greet them. Boss, why are you here? The two were puzzled, the green boy hated this kind of place the most, why did he come here in person today? The green man ignored them, because the snow-white lights had lit up the entire night sky, and the roar of the engine covered the sound of rain and filled his ears. Squeak, squeak, a large number of vehicles surrounded the container and blocked the gap. Heavily armed combatants stepped on the cars and climbed onto the boxes to occupy the commanding heights. The infrared collimator dyed the crowd below red. The faces of the security guards changed drastically, and they ran to hide behind the car in a panic, their hands holding the guns trembling uncontrollably. Which special force is this? It's so fast. The whole process took less than 30 seconds. By the time the siblings reacted, their way out was completely blocked. The two tremblingly huddled behind the green man, and asked in a low voice, Boss, what should we do now? They knew who these people were without having to guess. The sufferer is at the door. Whether the plan is successful or not, it all depends on the present. Lu Tongnin cleared his throat, bring me a chair. The two were stunned for a moment, and finally the beautiful woman reacted first. She trotted to the next door and dragged over a chair. The green man sat down with Dama Jindao, and directly in front of him was the continuous rain and more than a dozen muzzles. He unhurriedly unbuttoned his chest, and said to himself to the night. Twenty years ago, I was just an ordinary gangster wandering the streets of Monaco, living a life of precarity and hatred. One day, I was ordered by my boss to go to the port to deliver goods, and everything started to be normal until there was a strange noise from the trunk. After opening it, there was a little boy with blonde hair and blue eyes lying inside, his big eyes contained the most pure light in the world, he reminded me of my young brother. So I let him go and gave him ten dollars. The green man took off his coat, revealing his muscular upper body. He rolled up his sleeves, looked around, and asked with a smile. Guess what happened in the end? His tone was very flat, as if he didn't take death into consideration at all. His calm demeanor was in sharp contrast to the panic of the two people behind him. He was worthy of being the boss. Your life is hanging by a thread and you are still appetizing. The siblings shook their heads, indicating that they were unclear. Naturally, the fighters would not answer him, and remained silent, holding their guns tightly. Just when everyone thought it was a one-man show, heavy footsteps came from the rainy night. Boom, 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 a pair of pure black armor walked out of the dark night, and just standing there gave people a soul-stirring power. Locke's cold voice came from the armor. That little boy's name was Daniel Rand. Afterwards, your gang was liquidated, and you were the only one who survived. The green man continued. Yes, his father gave me a million dollars, and that's how I became what I am now. He walked out of the container, opened his arms, and let the cold raindrops hit him. The expression on his face gradually distorted, and a trace of madness appeared in his eyes. He roared. Tell me, should I kill you? The Rand group had caused such a big disturbance in New York before. With Green Boy's current financial resources, it would not be difficult to find out that Daniel had miraculously survived. Although he didn't know why Daniel disappeared, Stark Group became the final winner, and it was right to target it. He is still a guy who knows how to reciprocate. Locke continued. This reason is barely acceptable. What's the situation with your mysterious item? Hearing this, the green man lowered his arms, his eyes seemed to be looking at a fool, and he said disdainfully. Do you think I'll tell you, ha 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 ha. If that's the case, then you're going to die. Lark raised his head, his pitch black visor swept over everyone present, and a loud voice resounded through the night sky, hitting everyone's ears hard. Anyone who dares to bully Stark, kill. 
The armor clenched its right fist and swung it out violently, and the brilliant golden dragon flew out, tearing the green man and the siblings behind him into pieces, flying in the air and blending with the raindrops. The giant dragon's remaining power was not dissipated, pushing all the way, and the exquisitely decorated container was split into two, not much stronger than tofu residue. The combat team members guarding the back were unable to reach and were knocked to the ground. Boom! Crack Kacha! This scene was so shocking that the security guard brought by the green boy was frightened and looked at the armor in horror. Gudong! This, 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 this was typed by someone. If he hadn't been begging for food from the god of death all year round, he would probably have knelt down by now. The expressions of the surrounding combatants were almost the same under the masks. Except for Natasha, Haytham and a few of them, the rest of them didn't know that there was such a thing as a mysterious item. Not to mention that one person can cause such a great destructive power with his bare hands, even the Captain America in history can't do it. Lark retracted his fist and glanced sideways. After tonight, anyone who has thoughts about Stark has to carefully consider whether he can block this punch. Kill the chickens to warn the monkeys. The armor ignited flames and soared into the sky and disappeared into the night sky. A cold voice reached everyone's ears. Leave no one behind. The remaining power was still there, everyone pulled the trigger mercilessly, and the flames connected into one. Da 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 da, da 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 da. The ten security guards were unable to fight back and were instantly swallowed up by the metal storm. The gunfire stopped, and there was only a pool of mud on the scene, and the red color flowed into the sea along the ditch. Shark, thank you for the gift of nature. Sigh, it's over before I've had enough fun. Hawkeye wiped off the rain, looked at the corpse below, and was furious. Tell me about you, why don't you bring more people, these few shrimps are not enough to fit between your teeth, I am really disappointed in you. People around me looked sideways, you must be a devil. Hawkeye sighed, and jumped out of the car holding the AR-15 that hadn't fired a single shot. Just two steps away, a combat member standing on the roof of the car suddenly soared into the air and aimed at his head with a whip kick. Call, Hawkeye felt the movement and subconsciously raised the gun above his head. The assailant didn't expect him to do this trick at all, and it was too late to retract his leg, so he could only watch helplessly as his calf hit the gun. Crack, boom, the attacker fell to the ground with its buttocks down. It covered its buttocks and groaned in pain. Ah, Clint you fool, I'm obviously a victim, okay. Hawkeye reluctantly put the gun away, carefully avoiding the other thigh, lifted her up, and took off the hood. Natasha's eyes were fierce and her silver teeth were clenched, as if she was planning to eat him at any time. Isn't it just a long time since I saw you? There's no need to be so enthusiastic when you say hello. Natasha had just returned from a visit to the Wilson residence. Yes, yes, our Mr. $70,000, I know I was wrong, so can you help me up to see a doctor now? Okay, okay. Hawkeye helped her up and carried her to the car. The mission is complete, now it's time to reap the rewards. The large force was divided into two groups and began to sweep the battlefield, not letting go of anything that might be a mysterious item. The atmosphere went down in an instant and was no longer harmonious. At the same time, they each sent their own people to Lu Tongan's residence, which should be the place with the most mysterious items. Luck didn't say it clearly in the mission, but this was a hidden benefit for both parties to help each other in a righteous way. Anyway, no one can move faster than him. A streamer of light suddenly appeared in the dark and vast night sky, quickly approaching the sea surface, and finally hit the red heart and hit the deck. Boom, the huge movement attracted the crew out, and before they could see what it was, a few shots were fired, and the soul returned to the sea. Bang, 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 mysterious energy was discovered at a distance of 15 meters. Mysterious energy was discovered at a distance of 15 meters. A dozen prompts flooded the screen, and Luck had to turn off the panel. Happiness came too suddenly, he was not ready yet. In that case, you all come home with me and let's have a good time making out, ha 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 ha. He kicked open the iron door, walked to the three big wooden boxes, and shouted like he had lost his spirits. Take it, take it, take it. There was not enough space, so Luck temporarily absorbed three items and exchanged them for four cubic meters of storage space before packing them all. Out of the deck, a missile took away the freighter, and Lark disappeared into the night sky again. 
When we got back to the hotel, the rain stopped miraculously. He took off his armor and got out of the plane, just as Haytham stopped. Luke looked at the two or three kittens behind him, and said with a smile, did they go to raid the house? Well, shield one, he pointed to the Quinjet. The speed is fast, and it really has the advantage. Okay, you go and have some rest. Have fun tomorrow and go back to New York in the evening. Just after Lark took two steps, Shield sent two messages. 1. Green Man is secretly one of the shareholders of F. 2. From the moment the Green Man sent the email, he prepared many strange and weird places around the hotel, and the seaside restaurant was one of them. Now everything is connected. Liu Tongnan was favored by the Rand Corporation when he was young, so he felt deeply ashamed after the Rand Corporation accident, so he set his target on the most profitable Stark Corporation and waited for an opportunity to retaliate. The motives and evidence are sufficient, except for the mysterious item, there is no flaw. It seems like it's over. Lark shook his head and stopped paying attention. Anyway, he would go back after the competition tomorrow. It was just a whipcord, so trivial. Entering the hotel, Abao and the four of them were still surrounding Pepper, making her very happy. Tony. Tony is being beaten. The four big ones pushed him far away, and every time their tails would accidentally swing on him. Without Lark's, diamond iron stock, the only end result would be to be beaten until he screamed. After all, cats have a habit of respecting the old at the top, loving the young at the bottom, catching them and beating them hard. Rucker covered his face with his hands, pretended not to see his distress signal, and hurried back to the room, locking the door behind him. The bedroom was too small to hold five boxes, so Luck pushed the table and sofa in the living room to the corner and closed the curtains. Come out, my babies. Lark waved his hand, and five large wooden boxes appeared on the carpet. The off-white material matched the carpet perfectly. Boom, 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 boom. Without any tools, Lock started directly, clasped the edge with both hands and lifted it up, and the wooden box's sky cover was lifted directly. Several cups of different shapes and sizes lay among the yellow velvet, well protected. Lark didn't observe carefully, he took them out first, then opened all the remaining four wooden boxes, and finally divided them into two piles on the carpet. The 16 items on the left are mysterious items, and the 14 items on the right are ordinary curios. The ratio of close to one to one made Lark secretly worried. Was it too hasty to kill the green man like this? Forget it. My surname is Stark, can I still be bullied? Locke took 50 of them with an energy value higher than 7 into the space, and used them to accelerate the power of the dragon after returning to New York, and absorbed all the rest. Energy value plus 10. Energy value plus 19 inches. Energy value plus 31. Energy value plus 27. The sound of ding 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 reverberated in my ears, and the feeling of watching the balance increase was really wonderful. Balance. 298 energy value. With the money, the shopping desire in his heart broke out again. Locke found the most comfortable position to lie on the sofa and clicked on the panel. The two wives threw it on Abeo's head to see if he would dare to hit me with his head next time. Snort. Locke was full of joy and clicked the exchange, and then his face turned black into carbon in the next second. What's the matter with both ends being public? If you ask him how he knew, of course he saw it. Your European energy has been wiped away by you. Lark pushed the two little guys away. He didn't believe in evil and clicked to redeem again. Swish, swish, it's okay, okay, there's a guarantee. Now you don't have to worry about being hammered by Abao. The last two of the ten places are left, so Lark simply studs them all. Isn't it just twenty energy points? I have plenty of money. Successful exchange, successful exchange. Two more black shadows flashed by. This time Abao's character exploded and he successfully summoned two girlfriends for him. Counting this way, there are ten shadow panthers, six females and males. Lark slapped his thigh with his hand, uneven distribution. Snapped. The six little guys were a little confused when they first came out. They thought the slap was from luck calling them, so they turned their heads instantly and rushed towards them together. Hey, hey, don't come over here. Crack, Abao. At 8 o'clock in the morning, Monaco woke up from a deep sleep, and the mighty crowd began to march towards the northeast corner of the country. The place where the F1 race is held this time is called the Monte Carlo Circuit, 
which is notoriously narrow, curved and extremely difficult. The single lap track is 3.3 kilometers long and requires a total of 8 laps, which is about 26 kilometers. Two hours later, thousands of spectators entered the venue, and every site was full of people. Teams from more than a dozen countries around the world are conducting final inspections on their vehicles, striving to start the race in the best condition. 10.20. There were only 10 minutes left before the official start of the game, and Stark was nowhere to be seen. Hall, the F1 chairman on the podium, was anxious. You promised to come to the opening ceremony, where are you guys? Facing the questions from major shareholders and team owners, he could only apologize and laugh, and was prepared to be cursed by thousands of people and put on a pillar of shame. As for scolding, I absolutely dare not. Last night, Lu Tongnan's mansion was broken into, and the scene of the siege is still vivid. One of them saw it in Stark's team that day. Hall lives next door. The opening ceremony didn't start for the last five minutes, and Iron Man Tony didn't even see his shadow. The grumpy audience began to greet the leaders on the rostrum. Mommy Falker, where is our Iron Man, deceitful trash asterisk asterisk asterisk. The dog planned to die, and actually used Iron Man to trick us into buying tickets and refunding the money. We only want Iron Man, who wants to see your broken car play around here, refund the money. Refund the money. At first, it was just a few Iron Man fans shouting, and then people who wanted to take advantage took the opportunity to follow suit. Finally, more and more people shouted, arousing the emotions of the entire audience. Refund. 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 Hall's justification was covered by the waves of shouts, and the on-site staff's voice was broken, but it did not make up for it at all. The situation was gradually getting out of control, and a riot was about to break out. At this time, all the radios sounded thick rock music. Al you want a man of the street. The big screen in the arena was controlled, and two battle armors, one black and one red, were standing in the open hatch. Outside was the blue sky and white clouds, and the faintly visible track. Iron Man. Everyone stopped and stared at the big screen, with only one thought in their minds. He came. He came. The music gradually became more and more exciting, and soon came the first drum beat. In the midst of everyone's attention, the two battle armors said yes to the camera, then opened their arms and leapt back slightly. I'm like evil, I get under your skin. Everyone looked up at the same time, searching for the two figures in the air. Soon some viewers noticed, couldn't help but grab the person beside them, pointed to the sky with the other hand, and shouted excitedly. Oh, I see, over there. Over there, where is where, quickly point to me. Wow it's true, I saw it. Soon, everyone saw that it was falling rapidly. Armor. The rock music on the radio suddenly turned off, and Tony Stark's panicked voice sounded. Thank you. Jarvis quickly restart the flying device, I'm about to fall to my death. Warning, warning, flight unit malfunction, system retrieval, 5%, 10%. The distance was getting lower and lower, and the armor had lost its balance and was floating in the air. Another armor quickly approached and tried to hold him, and the audience's hearts rose to their throats. Tony hold on, I'm coming to save you. Shet, the wind in the sky is too strong for me to catch you, goodbye Tony, I will put you a nice bouquet next year. Fake squid luck. As he cursed, the audience sat down and watched the red armor fall, their eyes losing starlight. Iron Man is dying, too many women with too many pills. Suddenly, the passionate music sounded again, and the red battle armor shot out flames at the moment it was about to land, and flew high into the sky against the lawn. The instant sonic explosion rang in everyone's ears. Woohoo! I, Iron Man Tony Stark, is back. The Jedi survived, the audience stood up and shouted his name, Tony. 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 Iron Man. Iron Man. Iron Man. The scene seemed to be Tony's live concert. Tony swam quickly along the track and returned to the starting point of the track. He opened his mask and kept blowing kisses, with a bright smile on his face. Do you miss me? Think. Ha ha, I really love you guys. Tony laughed and waved his hands around, and the rich man's voice reached everyone's ears through the radio. If I say that I have all the tickets for today, will everyone love me more? Whoa, Iron Man, Iron Man, Iron Man. The scene fell into a climax again, and everyone patted the railing in unison. If it was because of adoring psychology before, 
Then under the offensive of money, everyone fell in love with this playboy and billionaire from the bottom of their hearts. After all, who can have trouble with money? After the cheers, the audience sat back to their seats under Tony's command. Hall, who found the opportunity, hurried down from the stage, fearing that the master would run away later. Mr. Stark, it's almost too late for the opening ceremony. Please hurry up and get on stage. The cheers were so high just now, haven't they been opened? Huoer was at a loss for words, he looked at the racing cars that were boarding the track one after another, and said, um, that's okay, but what about your racing car, it's still too late to drive in through the gate now. Tony smiled and pointed to the sky. Coming, heaven, Hall looked up, and immediately saw a gray-blue color-coded strange aircraft with Stark 2 printed on it landed on the track. The hatch was opened, and two racing cars, one black and one red, drove out of the hanging ladder and landed on the track. The unique roar caused many car enthusiasts present to prick up their ears. E.H., this voice is so special. What kind of engine is this? Why have I never heard of it? The latest V8 this year. No, that sound is not so loud. F1 relies on the engine for food. Hall licked his face and was about to ask, but the sound of the horn behind him startled him. Beep. Luke stretched out his hand out of the window and said to Tony, Don't waste time, there will be more exciting things waiting for you later. TCH, are you so anxious about eating exhaust fumes? I'll satisfy you. Tony walked into the cabin with a cold snort, and through the sunlight Hall saw many mechanical arms stretching out all around, taking off his armor. It made him drool, it would be great if he could have a set of this. Tony walked out of the cabin wearing a racing suit. Happy got out of the car to make way for him and walked to the transparent box to join Pepper and the others. The mission was completed, and Hill and the shield personnel evacuated together. Natasha simply stayed because of her leg injury, planning to watch the game before leaving. Hawkeye is honored to be employed again as a rickshaw driver. The leopards are also here and are having fun in the box. Luck turned the steering wheel and drove to the middle of the track with Tony, waiting for the team to assemble. This action is obviously to participate in the rhythm of the competition, and the audience climaxed again. Oh my god, Mr. Tony actually participated in the competition himself. Can he win? The people participating in the competition today are all professional racing drivers. I'm more curious about whose place he takes his place. Their doubts are destined to remain unanswered. Locke sat in the car, searching the crowd with his eyes, and soon saw Anton Venki in work clothes with a toothpick in his mouth in an inconspicuous corner. His body was bulging, obviously he had come prepared. By the way, where is the old hapless Han Mo? After looking around again, he was not found, and Locke was very sorry. Such superb people are rare, and they must be well protected. Tony saw his head turning around and asked curiously, what are you looking for? Your old enemy, who, ex-wife, who, Tony's face is full of questions. I know all the words, but I can't understand any of them when they come out of your mouth. It's nothing, prepare to concentrate on the game. With a one-minute countdown, the colorful paint turned the track into a flower, which was eye-catching. At this time, two racing cars with the logo of a Mustang stopped on both sides of Tony, one on the left and one on the right. The driver lifted his mask and gave a thumbs up. Mr. Stark, your performance just now was so cool, you must be the MVP of the audience. Another person was equally flattering. The moment you took off at the last moment of your life and death will definitely be recorded in the Guinness Book of Records for the most thrilling flights. The soul of Tony pretending to be 13 has long been impatient, and Lark can only taunt and base his happiness on his pain. Now that someone finally came over to flatter him, Tony quickly seized the opportunity to show his humility and raised his eyebrows under the helmet and never went down. Haha, all this is mainly due to my smart assistant, of course, my flying skills are the key to deciding this show. Yes, I think so too. Aha, possibly in response to Tony's fart, the two put on their helmets with a few perfunctory words and stared ahead. It seemed that he was not at all curious about Lark's identity. The broadcast reminded the staff to leave the field, the auditorium fell silent, and the red lights of the unique countdown to F1 came on one by one. Lark held his breath and concentrated, his extraordinary body's senses were fully activated, and everything around him came into his mind. The breeze blowing overhead, 
the racing driver's heart pounding next door, the vibrating cell phone of the woman in yellow outside the fence, Tony's hand firmly gripping the steering wheel. Beep, beep, D, buzz. The last red light came on, and all the racing cars rushed out instantly. The high-speed rotating tires left two dark marks on the ground, and the black smoke drifted to the auditorium along the breeze. The commentator's voice came from the radio. Hello, audience friends, this race has officially started. Now you can see that the leader is Carlos from the Red Bull Racing Team, followed by Lando. There is only half a parking space between the two cars. Wow, I didn't expect Mr. Stark to take the fifth and sixth places with his friends in the competition for the first time. This is beyond my expectation. We will soon reach the first corner, and I am looking forward to Mr. Stark's wonderful performance in the next race. Everyone in the box watched the game on the big screen on the wall. Pepper sat on the sofa and stared at the screen all the time, and couldn't help moving his hands every time there was a crisis. Abao's ears drooped, and he had nothing to love. Hey, woman, your hair will soon be bald by you. Hawkeye and Natasha were eating ice cream, leisurely, saying, it's okay, from time to time. The red Ferrari is the most aggressive, walking back and forth in the convoy, constantly trying to overtake, and the sound of the roaring engine is transmitted into the room through the speakers. In comparison, the black Ferrari looked extremely Buddhist, always sitting in the center of the team, neither competing nor competing, and firmly maintaining sixth place. But as long as you observe carefully, you will find that every time Locke dials the steering wheel, he will just block the people behind him and prevent them from overtaking. Therefore, the red Ferrari in front can break through with peace of mind. After failing to overtake again, he almost hit the wall. Tony stabilized the car and a grumpy voice came from the earphones. Shet, can this group of people know how to drive? The ant next door can drive faster than them. Luke, don't hide behind, hurry up and show them some color with me. The last time he lost to four robbers, it was because the other robbers ran first. Now everyone started at the same time. After the first lap, he was still in fifth place. This was unforgivable for Tony, who calls himself a genius. There is no word second in his dictionary. Locke looked in the rearview mirror, and he could feel the aggrieved eyes of the car behind him without his extraordinary body. Ahead is an almost 90-degree curve. Outside the fence is a cliff of tens of meters. The blue water and white clouds form a beautiful and deadly picture. Let me show you what a drain corner is. Rucker puts it in gear, slams on the accelerator, and the black Ferrari sprints out. Tony, follow me. What? Tony looked in the rearview mirror, and then let out a chiete, and turned the steering wheel to the left in a panic, so as to avoid the scene of, brothers and brothers congratulations. Before he could curse, Luck took advantage of everyone's opportunity to slow down and turn the horsepower to the maximum. He was still more than 10 meters away from the corner and instantly completed a series of actions such as turning the steering wheel and applying the brakes. Smoke billowed from all four tires, and the black Ferrari cut into the corner almost along the yellow line on the ground, squeezing the other drivers against the wall for a perfect drift. Climb first. Squeak. Bang. Monkey thunder. What happened just now? That black Ferrari actually overtook at the killing corner. Audience friends, have you seen it? Oh my god, how did he do it? No one has ever dared to speed up in this position. If he makes a mistake, he will fly off the cliff. Audience, what a joke. Tony, how does this make me follow? Other drivers, you are here to fry fish. Surprises come one after another. Taking advantage of everyone's attention being attracted, Anton punched another employee unconscious, snatched the key from him, opened the iron gate, and walked into the track. The radio was broadcasting, and the team was still dozens of meters away from the next bend. The rumbling sound arrived first, making people's ears hurt. Anton turned the toothpick and gave a cruel smile to the security guards on both sides who tried to stop him. Standing in the middle of the track, he yanked open his skirt, revealing the fake version of the nuclear reactor strapped to his chest. The bright light could not be blocked even by the sun. The exaggerated shape and fierce eyes immediately made the audience realize that something big is about to happen. Several people next to the track turned pale and quickly retreated. At this moment, the black Larry appeared at the corner, and Anton seemed to see the driver's confused eyes. He spat out the toothpick, swung his arms, and two long whips fell into his hands. Electric current surged, and the clothes on his body were burned instantly. 
Anton raised his right hand, aimed at the black Ferrari and slammed it down. The electric whip caused a lot of sparks in the air. The angle is tricky and the power is great, but the speed is a bit slow and it still stands motionless in the middle of the road. However, I'll leave it to you to play. Luck glanced at the rearview mirror, lightly struck with his right hand, and the black Ferrari easily leaned against the wall to avoid the attack. When he was wrong, he made an international friendly gesture. Bang! Zzzzz. The electric whip left a deep mark on the ground, and Anton's face turned red instantly. That guy dared to mock me. Anton suddenly turned his head, and threw out another whip in retaliation. I missed it just now, let alone thinking about it now. After taking a sip, Anton could only focus on Tony's red Ferrari. He didn't believe that the soft-legged shrimp could also escape the attack. Otherwise I'll eat this car. Following luck, Tony successfully took advantage and came in second place. He didn't need Jarvis to remind him that he had already seen the perverted man. Shet, Locke tricked me again. With Locke's strength, this person will definitely not be able to go through a round in his hands. Tony snarled and pressed the button. Kaka, Kaka, Kaka. Ten meters away, Anton raised the electric whip again. At five meters, the whip managed to hit the red Ferrari, splitting it in two. Boom. A gold and red battle armor flew out of the seat, and its metal legs, which were bigger than his face, fell towards Anton's neck. Anton is worthy of being a famous fighter. At the last moment, he rolled sideways on the spot, narrowly avoiding this kick. Boom! The battle armor made of titanium alloy easily submerged into the ground, and the black asphalt only rubbed off a layer of paint on the surface. The brand new triangular reactor on the chest exudes a charming light. In the private room, a certain pink-haired woman quietly took out her mobile phone. Hailsham glanced at it without stopping her. By the time your people arrive, the day lilies will be cold. Anton stood up against the fence, with the electric whip on his chest, and his brows were frowned, you updated the reactor. Using only a bunch of crude equipment to create a fake reactor, it can be seen that he is a genius himself, and he can see that the energy source on Tony's chest is not right at a glance. I just searched all the known elements in my memory and couldn't find anything that could correspond to it. Something is not right. Anton tightens his grip on the whip. Tony was also curious about where the opponent's reactor came from. He pulled out his leg, walked forward, and said, I have good eyesight. Where did your reactor come from? This technology belongs to me. Before waiting for an answer, a red exclamation mark popped up on the display, and Jarvis issued a warning. Sir, after scanning the opponent's reactor has not taken protective measures and is emitting lethal radiation. Please ensure the integrity of the armor. Tony blurted out after listening. Shet, are you dead and running around wearing a radiation source? Anton sighed and didn't answer. Tony's, good eyesight, proved that he had indeed found a new energy source. At this moment, the car behind them happened to rush out of the corner, causing chaos on the track and crashing into the two of them. They did not have Luck's extraordinary body and Tony's armor. Anton grinned, stepped out with his right foot and shook his hands violently, and the long whip was dispatched like a spirit snake to form an intercepting net in the middle of the track. We'll talk about it after the fight. Those are my fans. Tony kicked his legs together, and with the powerful power provided by the arc reactor, he stepped on the car fragments and flew in the air. With a touch of his hand on his waist, a silver metal handle appeared on his hand, and a blue-white light appeared in Anton's pupils. Buzz. Shish. The electric whip was cut off easily and returned to ordinary material and was blown by the wind beside the track. Boom. Tony landed. At this moment, he was wearing a battle armor and holding a lightsaber. The racing car galloped past him, and the extreme movement and extreme stillness formed a sharp contrast. On the opposite side, Anton was staring at the bare handle in a daze, where's my whip? Where is my whip? All the children in the audience shouted excitedly. Ah, Jedi, Jedi, Mom, you lied to me. Jedi obviously really exist. Wife, Jedi Knight, childish man, Mom rolled her eyes. Iron Man I love you. Rich people, Anton vowed not to give up and continued on with two bachelor sticks. Luck slowly stopped the car, pressed the button with his thumb, the steering wheel retracted, and the metal parts stretched out from the seat to wrap around him. Knowing that I would meet Anton Vanke, if I didn't make some preparations, how could I dare to go on the track? 
His current physical body cannot withstand a whip. Boom, the car door flew out, ripped apart the iron mesh, and fell into the sea. Luck came out of the car, wearing a black painted version of the Mark II. Just two steps away, Pepper called, Luck, Tony is okay. Do you see him having such a good time, as if something happened? It's okay, the opponent's weapon has been damaged, it's not Tony's opponent. Lark continued, you stay in the box and don't come out. Hailsham and Abau will protect you. If there is an emergency, you can call Jarvis. Wow, boss, don't worry, I, we won't let them get hurt a little bit. What's the matter with your voice? To be honest, Lark was quite looking forward to the scene where someone took care of the guard at the door and rushed into the box with confidence. One slide to feed ten shadow panthers. That is it. After hanging up the phone, Lark rushed to the rescue, beat the dog in the water. Fighting should be shoulder to shoulder, if you can fight in groups, don't single out, good habits must be maintained. At this moment, a strange scene formed at the battle scene, with lightning flashing below, gravel flying randomly, and everyone above dancing with red faces. So much so that there were constantly attracted spectators around to watch this battle at close range, or to be precise, a one-sided beating. It is human nature to join in the fun. The police patrolling outside the venue received the notification and opened the connection to the track. Just about to set off, a dump truck suddenly rushed out from behind, overturned a number of police cars and hit the wall, overturned, blood mixed with asphalt covered the track. The police officers who escaped unharmed immediately launched a rescue, using various tools, trying to rescue people from the asphalt. The fat man kept flipping over with a shovel, and soon saw the car door. He happily put down the shovel, opened it with his hands, and immediately widened his eyes. A mass of black viscous substance hit the front door, penetrated into the skin-like life, and disappeared. Dang, seeing that he was frozen in place, the strong man picked up the shovel and handed it over, urging, don't be stunned and dig quickly. Maybe we can save a few. After saying it several times, there was still no response. Zhuang Zhuang was a little angry. He raised his hand and patted the fat man on the shoulder. Hey you, the fat man grasped the wooden handle like lightning, swung his backhand, and the sharp spikes of the shovel passed across the strong man's neck, bringing up a large smear of bright red. PFF. The strong man covered his neck and pointed at his best friend, unbelievable that he would kill himself. You you you, pff everyone was shocked, and they pulled out their pistols and pointed them at him. Peterson, you're crazy, put down the shovel, put it down. Peterson lowered his hair and let out a weird laugh, like a demon returning from hell, he turned slowly to reveal his white pupils. Gia 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 gia. Under the horrified eyes of everyone, Peterson moved. He kicked off his legs, showing speed that was extremely inconsistent with his body type, and rushed into the group of police officers. With both hands waving, the heavy shovel felt like a long sword being driven out by him, making it as light as a feather and extremely nimble. PFF, PFF, bang, he's no longer, um. Boom, the last policeman knelt on the ground, with blood flowing down his chest to the ground, he said weakly, you, dot nod. Peterson. Boom, take a shovel away. The track was full of dead bodies at the moment, blood soaked the police uniform, dyed the ground red, and the golden police badge was in the pool of blood, exuding a bewitching light. The people around had already run away and hid far away. Peterson, shouldn't it be said, threw away the shovel casually, then opened his arms, and countless black liquid gushes out from his legs and crawled onto the body. An eerie crunch echoes across the track. Crack, crack, the corpse, disappeared, at a speed visible to the naked eye. After a while, the satiated dark red substance flowed back, and it closed its eyes with an expression of enjoyment. A moment later, it pulled out two western-style long swords with cold light from the driver's seat of the dump truck. Pulling a knife, it ran along the track, and stopped suddenly after turning the corner. In the distance stood two battle armors, one black and one red. Looking at this familiar face, Tony remained calm and asked, didn't it be killed by you, why did it come back to life? How did I know that all the money was received and used to change Abao's wife? Wouldn't it be embarrassing if I answered like this? Ahem, he must be his brother. After all, there are the most inhuman things in the world. Quote dot dot dot, ha ha, that makes sense. Tony continued. 
Then what to do now? The gaps in the battle armor can't be blocked, once it is parasitized by it, it will be over. Without giving the two of them much time to chat, it licked its lower lips and left an afterimage of its fat body on the track. Gia 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 Gia. It's so fast. Lark cursed angrily, took out the lightsaber from the space and rushed forward. Go back and change a set of battle armor, cooperate with Jarvis to use energy weapons for long-range attacks, cut off its retreat, and don't give it a chance to disperse and escape. Tony did not act bloody and decisively retreated to a high place, and at the same time asked Jarvis to call in both planes. After a brief understanding that night, this creature has the ability to split, parasitize, and swallow just captured by the camera. Among all the people present, only Locke's golden power can restrain him, and the others are purely delivering food. No matter how sophisticated the armor is, it cannot stop the water flow from penetrating. The gray-blue Stark No, which had delivered the car before, did not leave, and arrived one step ahead. In the brightly lit engine room, there are five glass cabinets neatly arranged around it, inside which is the arc reactor version of the Mark. Aircraft Carrier, Mobile Fortress. The word came to both Hawkeye and Natasha's minds at the same time. As a patient with a lack of firepower phobia, Lark is not short of money now, so of course he must find a way to pile up his equipment. This is only a small part. Thanks to the space, it can be put directly on the body without the assistance of a mechanical arm. He also put five sets of armor and n spare energy sources inside. A real walking humanoid turret. There was a huge ring device in the cabin. After everyone entered, the device cracked, several mechanical arms stretched out from above the head, and the glass cabinet opened. Jarvis's projection appeared next to him. According to the boss's order, fights should be shoulder to shoulder, everyone quickly put on the battle armor. He named Haytham, Clint, and Happy in turn, and the remaining two were given to Natasha and Pepper. Am I also involved? Natasha was shocked. She was just a casualty and a temporary helper. Yes, but you and Secretary Pepper do not personally participate in the battle. They are responsible for flying the aircraft for long-range attacks. Wearing the armor is just a precaution. Okay, got it. Natasha made a big gesture and immediately started searching for her favorite color combination. Fury was going crazy thinking about Tony's armor, but she didn't expect that she would be lucky enough to wear it today and experience it. Such a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity cannot be missed. Lark had already collided with it outside, so everyone walked into the ring device one by one without wasting time. Twenty lives seemed to have strengthened it in some way. Black light lingered on the rapier, and there was a faint smell of sulfur in the air. Locke didn't dare to underestimate the enemy, and mobilized the power of the dragon to cover his whole body to form a protective film, so that besides the armor, he had a second layer of defense. It held two swords in both hands and rushed straight towards Lark. At the moment when they were about to collide, it suddenly changed direction. Black material surged under its feet. It walked upright on the metal fence. The two swords flew through the air and went straight to Lark's throat. Do you think it was the narrow space like last time? The lightsaber smashed the long knife in front of him, Lark's body rotated, and the whip leg supported by the reactor slammed into its chest hard. Boom, crack, its eyes bulged, and with a crisp sound of bones breaking, it flew upside down more than 10 meters and fell to the ground. Puff puff, after rolling a few times and laying motionless on the ground, the long sword fell beside him, as if he was already dead. Naturally, Lark would not be so stupid as to go over to check, he is a man with armor. Consciousness sank into the space, and he chose the thick version, and replaced it with the crimson mark. The three reactors on his chest showed its combat effectiveness. The Mark II is thin and light, limited by its size and not equipped with additional weapons. Jarvis, blasted with an energy weapon. Roger, target locked. There was a clicking sound on the empty track, four black barrels stretched out from the shoulders and arms, and blue light began to condense. Buzz, 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 it lay on the ground without letting down its guard. The moment the gun barrel was pointed, the black substance felt threatened and subconsciously controlled its body to stand up, trying to grab the sword and attack again. However, it underestimated the charging speed of the arc reactor. As soon as it stretched out its hand, a blue beam of light directly hit its arm. There was no flesh and blood flying, no blood splattering, and the hit part was directly vaporized, leaving only charred wounds. 
It was overturned to the ground again by the huge kinetic energy, and only then did the firing sound come. C. After beating the drowned dog, the armor fired two beams again, aiming at the head and abdomen respectively. Gia 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 Gia. After all, it is not a human being, and its reaction speed will not be slowed down by pain. The moment the beam approached, the black substance condensed into a spring under his feet, allowing him to dodge the attack again. It stood up with one hand on the ground, and quickly approached Locke in an S-shaped run on the track. When passing by, it swung one arm, and the black substance formed a rope to hook the long sword back into its hand. Call out, Ba, PFF, Ba, PFF, Ba, PFF. The long sword danced, and the black light formed a network in the air, and it could always split the energy beam accurately every time. It can see that the opponent's armor is very powerful, but it is too big and clumsy. As long as it rushes over by itself, it can be eliminated with a single sword. After thinking about this, it split three groups of energy with one knife, and the black material on its back exploded to form thrust. It bent its knees and slid its body against the ground. The energy of the long knife surged so black that it shone brightly. Locke's lower body felt cold, and he decided not to take the risk. He turned off the energy transmitter, held it with his fingers, and a light brown substance the size of a fingernail appeared in his hand. Locke aimed at the front and slammed it down, the golden light surged, the matter became bigger and bigger, and finally formed a wall. The long knife collapsed at the first touch, breaking into countless fragments, and the keel was like a broken bamboo, smashing the fat man's body flat. Crack, countless black substances were splashed, almost covering the entire track. Lark removed the keel and brought up a skin, which was exquisite and smooth, with lifelike expressions. Definitely the best human skin material. Shet, the battle is not over yet, just like that night, it is the strongest without a body. The black substance stained on the armor squirmed and invaded along the gaps, and those scattered on the ground quickly condensed into a ball and crawled to the distance. I shouldn't have hammered it apart just now. Locke's mind moved slightly, intending to put away the armor, trap them in the space, and clean up the outside first. Swallowing twenty people is already so troublesome, if you let him have a full meal again, the consequences will not be obvious the split skill is too weak. Receive. The panel and Jarvis popped up reminders almost at the same time. Warning, the item contains living things and cannot enter the space. Boss, they are destroying the lines and cutting off energy transmission. The system cannot last much longer. Before he finished speaking, countless sparks crackled around the armor, the reactor went out, and the system went offline. Losing energy, the battle armor is like an iron bump. The weight of hundreds of caddies suddenly hit, and Locke was crushed so that his body staggered and almost fell. Dangadang, dangadang, shet, Lark stabilized his body, tore off the visor with his bare hands, opened his throat and shouted. Tony, stop it, got it, give it to us. Three battle armors of different colors flew over the stands, the shoulder armor was opened, and the barrel was charged for a short time, and began to attack the black matter. Ba bang, ba bang, ba bang. Having suffered a loss just now, the black substance did not dare to be hit, and its body turned into water flow, sometimes closing and sometimes scattering, and each time it could always dodge the attack at the last moment. The scene became a real game of whack a mole. Although it didn't cause any damage, the successive attacks slowed down its speed. The backup armor was only equipped with an arc reactor, and after repeated attacks, its energy dropped rapidly. Hawkeye transformed into a commander and called on the channel, Natasha, hurry up and bring the plane over. We don't have much energy. And Stark won, why hasn't it arrived yet? Natasha's embarrassed voice sounded on the channel. Come on, this armor definitely doesn't belong to Tony. His legs are not that long. As he finished speaking, the gray-blue Stark too hovered in the sky and landed above the three of them. A gun barrel protruding from the belly of the machine is n times larger than the armor, and the surrounding air is crackling when it is charged. The dough-shaped black substance instantly shrank into a ball, forming a black ball with bubbling bubbles on the surface. It quickly retreated and rushed into the auditorium to escape. Natasha smiled ferociously, pressed the launch button, and a beam of light as thick as her arm blasted out. Boom! The small half of the black ball's body disappeared together with the steps, it wailed, and then fled. What? Misfortunes never come singly, 
Stark One also arrived directly in front, and a blue beam of light fell from the sky. Boom, boom, Black Ball took advantage of the bunker to hide and finally managed to save his life. Everyone is afraid of its parasitic ability and dare not go down, so they can only put their hopes on Lark. Lark mobilized the power of the dragon to break away from the armor, forming a light shield around his body, then slowly shrinking, driving up the black matter hidden in the gaps, and finally formed a small black ball in the palm of his hand. Discover the mysterious energy, whether to absorb it. Yes, the black substance turned into a thick black mist with a bang, and poured into the gemstones, and a miserable scream sounded in the ear. Ah, no, I just came out. At the same time, the black ball fleeing in the distance suddenly exploded, then retracted, exploded, and retracted, and so on. Energy value plus 150. After devouring it, Lark immediately retracted his battle armor, ran to the big black ball, and started sucking it while it was still in the state of disconnection and reconnection. The black mist surged in the air and condensed into an illusory face with two horns on its head and scarlet eyes staring at Lark, roaring. I remember you. A lot of nonsense. Lark swung his fist to disrupt the black mist, causing the gem to be absorbed faster. At least it looks like it's coming soon. Energy value plus 50. Energy value plus 50. Energy value plus 100. As the last ray of black mist was absorbed, Lark's balance also broke through the 1137 mark for the first time, reaching energy points. There are still zeros and holes. Locke withdrew his fist and breathed a sigh of relief. Phew, finally done. Seeing this situation, everyone guessed that it should be dead, and controlled the plane and armor to land on the track. Bang, bang. At the beginning, the painting style was very normal, everyone landed steadily, until the last pair of dark blue armor, the flames on the soles of the feet were intermittent, swinging back and forth in the air. Hey, hey, Jarvis, what are you doing, why can't I control my body? Mr. Harpy's armor is a bit overweight, and the energy is about to run out, so bear with it. What does it mean to be overweight? Hey, hey. Boom, Happy fell free from a height of three meters and fell to the ground. Fortunately, the shock absorption system inside the armor was not affected by energy, so he did not miss the same wheelchair as Natasha. Happy leaned on the ground and tried to sit up, but the hundreds of kilograms of armor obviously disagreed. He could only open his mouth and shake people. Boss, can someone help me? There was a hint of shame in the desolate voice, two points of regret, three points of embarrassment. After all, there were so many people present, and he was the first to rely on his own worth to crush the armor. The corners of everyone's mouths twitched, and Lark waved Haytham away, then turned around and walked towards Stark II. Tony was wearing a lightweight Mark II, stuck his head out from the cabin door, looked behind Locke, and asked curiously. Are you sure you're dead this time? Lark nodded subconsciously, thinking of the last devil's warning, he shook his head and said uncertainly. It shouldn't be dead, and it seems to have messed with a big guy. How big is it? It will only be more troublesome than today's. That's good. Tony suddenly breathed a sigh of relief. He patted his younger brother on the shoulder like a boss and encouraged him, come on. Lark. At this time, Haytham was holding two long swords, and Hawkeye walked in with Harpy on the left and right, placed him on the middle device, and stretched out the mechanical arm to start taking off the armor. Haytham put down his long sword, lifted his mask, walked to Locke's side, pointed to the riddled track outside, and asked. Boss Anton and the losses it caused are conservatively estimated at 200 million US dollars. There are also subsequent mass appeasement issues. Do you need me to ask the manager to come forward? In just two sentences, it was revealed that Haleson not only knew something about the economy, but also knew a thing or two about the aftermath. For some reason, Lark subconsciously glanced back at Happy, who was waiting to be rescued. They both had two eyes and one nose. Why was there such a big gap? No, someone will take care of it for us, now go straight home. Lark patted Hawkeye's chest and found a seat to sit down. Eat people with short mouths, and take people softly. Natasha and Hawkeye wore his armor and visited a human versus demon scene for free. In return for just letting them deal with the aftermath, Lark felt that he was too kind. New York, Monaco owes itself a good citizen award. The blue flames sprayed out, and the plane disappeared into the sky. After a long while, 
the familiar black SUV arrived and surrounded the scene, followed by the familiar accident, sealing the two brushes. Still on the encrypted channel, Pierce spoke. Number one. I heard you fail. Number one. It would be great if you promised to join forces, but he will never leave. Number one. After a long time, the other party finally went online and replied mysteriously. Number four. Failure doesn't mean no gains. Are you interested in hearing this time? Number one. Tell me what the conditions are. No. As usual, if I give out information, I will get half of it for one person. Pierce felt his old face burning hot. He had just said this to the other party a few days ago. I can see the report submitted by Natasha and Hawkeye, but if number four dares to say this, it must be something that is not in this report. After careful consideration, he still agreed. Soon the other party sent a document. Inside is a video and a document. So little. Pierce was the first to click on the video. The screen is a bit shaky, but it can be seen that it is on the sea, and occasionally a few seagulls fly by in the sky. At this time, the screen switches, and a person on the track in the distance rushes towards the armor with two swords in his hand. At the end of the video, the frame was fixed at the moment when Lark swung his fist to dispel the fog. The front of his clothes was open, and the gemstone pendant on his chest was shining. After the playback, Pierce did not click on the next file directly, but folded his arms and stared at the gemstone, as if he was thinking about something. After a while, he opened the file, and it was a log written by a female hotel employee. He skipped the technical terms and went straight to the end. Pepper Potts is suspected to be pregnant. The original Quinn jet fighter can accommodate 10 people plus a little equipment. After Tony got it and modified it, the space was further compressed, and it was obvious that it could not accommodate so many people in the Shadow Panther. So Happy took off his armor and volunteered to take the other nine leopards to Stark One. Its name is to lighten the burden for everyone. Make space. The middle ring rose to form a small platform. Tony placed two long swords on it. After scanning, Jarvis started big data recognition. Unexpectedly, the results came out in just two minutes. Tony let out a projection in the cabin with a cry of surprise. Everyone, take a look at this news. Lark turned off the panel and opened his eyes. Others were also curious about what Tony had discovered, and they came over one after another. On the projection is a newspaper published in Europe in the last century. The title is very avant-garde and belongs to the now popular, Shock Party. Shocked, the heir of the Aseca family regained his arms and blood bathed the entire manor overnight. Close double angle bracket. The accompanying picture shows a pair of Western style long swords inserted into the corpse, with a pentagram symbol on the hilt. Everyone was immediately aroused by the large scale photos, and then looked down. The main text uses a lot of words to describe the tragedy of the manor, and only a few sentences at the end describe the general process. Sloan Aseka, a famous swordsman genius in Europe in the last century, was attacked by his opponent in a competition and lost both arms. Since then, his family has abandoned him and he has been in ruins. One day, his arms recovered miraculously, and he carried out the massacre with the long sword used in the old competition. By the time the police arrived, Sloan had committed suicide. After the demon incident just now, everyone knows that Sloan must have encountered a black ball, or was simply parasitized by it. They don't know that thing is actually called a devil. So he will start killing after his arm recovers. As for why Sloan committed suicide in the end and why his body was not eaten, they don't know. Natasha, who was sitting in the front row, rolled her eyes, brushed her hair, and said to someone who was thinking in a charming voice. Mr. Lark, you are the best, tell us why. Except for Hawkeye, everyone else frowned slightly. Oh, ignorant woman. After several hours of sailing, the plane finally returned to New York as night fell. On the forested Long Island, the brightly lit manor is particularly eye-catching. When the hatch is opened, the salty sea breeze that belongs to New York pours in. Maybe this is the smell of home. Luke took a deep breath. Who would have thought that after just going out for a few days, he would actually become an uncle? The world is changing so fast. I wonder what happened to my little niece. Lark turned his head, and a certain guy turned into a licking leopard and circled around Pepper. Hawkeye pushed Natasha while the others got their belongings and walked out of the plane. Locke hugged Tony, 
who was about to slip away with a long sword in his arms, and leaned over to little Pepper, kicked away the pissed Abau, looked at her abdomen, and said. Pepper, do you like the company's hospital, or I will ask Winston to buy one now, and I promise you will not be wronged in the slightest. He accidentally fell into a coma when he was very young, requiring medical staff to drain his blood every day to keep him active. Tony simply spent money to acquire a private hospital to serve Stark specifically, including employee medical care. And you, Lark patted his brother's chest, winked, and asked, when are you going to hold the wedding? I, the best man, can't wait. Hospital, wedding, okay. Everyone was shocked at the same time. Haytham who was walking in front slowed down, especially Happy and Natasha, who tilted their heads and eavesdropped openly. Pepper rubbed Abau's angry head, subconsciously replied, hospital. I'm not sick, and there was no problem in the last physical examination. Stark Industries has physical examinations every six months, and executives have better benefits every three months. If she gets sick, Jarvis will notify Tony as soon as possible. Since the last hotel incident, the relationship between the two of them had fallen into embarrassment. It was only this time in Monaco that it eased slightly and barely returned to the previous state of separation of public and private matters. But the state of marriage is still far away. Tony avoided Pepper's eyes, coughed and put his arms around his brother, deliberately changing the subject. Ahem, Lark, have you finally decided to marry the iceberg beauty? Don't worry, I support it with both hands. The wedding will definitely be the grandest in the world. Quote. Who told you to be? Before he could finish speaking, Lark broke free of his arm and rushed forward with a, Shua, squinting his eyes to observe the two people. Something is wrong. When I mentioned the hospital, why did Pepper wonder, wasn't she pregnant? And the expression doesn't look like he's faking it. Also, although Tony is a promiscuous person, he is not a scumbag who always gives up. If he had known that Pepper was pregnant, he would never have such a heartless expression. Could it be? Locke gestured a ring on his abdomen, and asked tentatively. Pepper, you know, are you pregnant yourself? What? Dang. Boom. Pepper looked down at his abdomen, then covered his mouth suddenly, his head shook like a rattle drum, and his eyes were quickly filled with water mist. I, I don't know, what you said is, is it true? Locke nodded seriously, with a very serious expression, not joking. He turned to look at his brother. Tony's eyes were dull, his mouth was half-opened, and he was motionless. The long sword fell and hit his foot without any response. After a while, the brilliance flooded into his eyes again, and he took a deep breath until he was choked. Suck cough, 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 you are. Pregnant, pregnant. With tears in her eyes, Pepper shook her head first, then nodded, and finally fainted, and she could only put her hands on her slightly flat belly. After receiving the answer, Tony was in a trance again, then puffed out his chest, walked over Manly and hugged her in his arms, turned his head firmly, and said. Happy, prepare the car and go to the hospital. Okay boss, Happy shouted, jumped up and patted Haytham on the shoulder, ran to the garage excitedly, and shouted to the surrounding security. Don't stand there stupidly, quickly check the vehicle and get ready to go. Ha ha, I knew they were a couple, as expected of you, the man who sees through the truth, Happy. Everyone moved immediately, checking communications, vehicles, and firearms. After a while, the convoy escorted the Rolls-Royce away from the manor. To be on the safe side, Lark asked Haytham to follow him in a plane and sent a text message to Winston. On the same spot, Natasha was sitting in a wheelchair with her head half-lowered, her right hand rubbing the bulging leather on the clothes around her waist. After a while, she raised her head and forced a smile on her face. Congratulations, thanks for sending me back, I'm leaving first. After speaking, she pushed Hawkeye away, and pushed the wheelchair away by herself. The long pink hair is particularly eye-catching under the dim sky. Locke pretended to be stupid, raised his head and asked, what happened to her? Hawkeye shook his head, I don't know. The convoy entered the hospital and took the elevator directly to the top floor, where the dean in suits and leather shoes had already brought people to wait. Tony was in no mood to chat with him and took Pepper directly into the examination room. It was a milky white square instrument that looked a bit like an old-fashioned TV. There was a small screen in the middle. A half-white-haired female doctor swept the gun head, 
over Pepper's abdomen, and various data immediately appeared on the screen. The waiting process is the most painful, especially when facing the most important things in life. Sweat broke out on Tony's forehead, and the hand holding Pepper was wet. It had never felt so hot. He thought the air conditioner was not on, but the breeze above told him that it was on. Tony opened his collar, smiled and said to Pepper who was doing the examination, It's strange, I feel so hot even though the air conditioner is on. Pepper was actually so nervous that her hands were shaking, but it wasn't as obvious as Tony's. Withdrawing her hand, the white palm was pinched with red marks, she wiped off the sweat stains on someone's clothes, and said in a slightly disgusted tone, Yeah, the sweat is black, and I don't know if I washed my hands or not. Quote. Ah, really. Tony hurriedly wiped it on his clothes, but the shape of the sword hilt couldn't be rubbed off. He looked around, trying to wash his hands in the sink, but when he got up, he was held by a small hand. The result is out. It was a very simple sentence, but Tony felt as if a hammer had hit his chest, and his heart suddenly started to speed up. Bang, bang, bang. He sat down stiffly, grasped his little hand again, exchanged glances with Pepper, and asked, how's the result? The female doctor with half-hundred hair said with a smile. Congratulations to Mr. Stark, Ms. Pepper is about twenty days pregnant and is doing well. Tony let out a long breath when he heard the words, and his whole state changed instantly. He smiled and nodded at the doctor, then adjusted his seat and gazed into Pepper's eyes. We go home. It is good. After leaving the hospital, the two of them were escorted back to the manor by Happy. Outside the window is the bustling Manhattan, brightly lit. After the convoy passed, an ordinary car drove out from the shadows, turned left and right and disappeared into the street. At the manor, Luck turned on his phone and suddenly thought. What on earth was Pepper doing when he said, Elbow, come into the house with me, that day in Monaco? Chapter 71 Natasha left the manor, got into the car that picked her up, and drove through Queens and around Brooklyn before driving into the port. Containers, corridors, gates, everything is so familiar. The dark-skinned guy was pushing a wheelchair, and the one-eyed fury was wearing a windbreaker, with no expression on his dark old face. But when he saw Natasha getting out of the car in a wheelchair, the corners of her eyes still inevitably twitched. Lark, come to my office. The dark-skinned guy pushed the wheelchair to the left. Another black guy saw this and stepped forward to help him. However, Natasha took out a pistol from her waist and pointed it at his head. Finger lightly on the trigger. The barrel flicked slightly, and Hay laughed angrily. I'm so envious of Hill and Hawkeye. Natasha used great perseverance to move her fingers away, put the gun in the most convenient position, and followed behind with her wheelchair. Hill was backed by someone. After the, Stark Manor, case, the relationship between the New York branch and the headquarters became very rigid, and there was a tendency to gradually separate. Fury had no choice but to clear out the base and stay there temporarily. Anyway, it has been exposed, so it is better to use it as waste. When I entered the office, there were already people waiting. Black suit and white tie, with a permanent smile on his face, and the iconic hairline at the back of his head. More than half a month ago, Coulson and Fury woke up at the same time. He quickly accepted the fact that he had been in a coma for several months. As an agent, injuries were inevitable. But when the intelligence agent sent what happened during this period of time, he was completely shocked. Magical jaguar, steel armor, ninjas that disappeared out of thin air, green monsters, life essence. The world seemed to switch from day to night, and all kinds of strange and weird things appeared all at once. The level of outrageousness is no less than that of the year when that glowing woman physically resisted nuclear bombs and flew across the universe. In the end, it took Coulson three full days to sort out all the information. After entering the office, Natasha still kept the pistol beside her and did not speak. Fury's eyebrows twitched, and he could only wave his hand to drive the dark-skinned guy away. Lark, ahem, I've called you here this time because I have an important matter for you to do. Fury opened the drawer and took out a document from it. Combining the mission report provided by Commander Hill and the Black Matter mentioned in Natasha's text message, it is obvious that this is the work of the same organization. Their target is the Stark Brothers. The Green Man was just pushed out as a scapegoat and paralyzed us at the same time. Seize the opportunity to take down the two Stark Brothers in one go during the game. Quote. 
There is no need to guess about this matter, as long as a normal person can see the connection. Fury opened the file, and the content was surprisingly basic information about the family of the swordsman genius Sloan Aseka. There was a picture cut out of a newspaper on the side. At the scene of Sloan's suicide, a coffee cup lay in a pool of blood. The mouth is inlaid with gold threads, and the whole body is painted with faint clouds. The two of them were confused. What happened to the cup? Hill only told Fury about the glass shattering and the mist drifting out, or so it seemed. Fury pointed to the cloud pattern on the coffee cup with a solemn expression. The night Stark was stabbed, in addition to the black matter, there were clouds and mist covering the mountain. The two suddenly realized that it was not a coincidence. The basic situation was clearly explained, and Fury ordered, over there in Monaco, Commander Hill has sent someone to investigate. The two of you are responsible for going to Europe to investigate the truth about the extermination of the Aseka family. He pretended to be righteous and evil, and said solemnly, it is the duty of S.H.I.E.L.D. to maintain world peace. The one-eyed glanced at the two of them, like the Virgin Mary in the church, do you understand? Coulson smiled and nodded, understood. I really don't want to interrupt your performance. Natasha raised her hand and asked a soul-piercing question. Director, what if, I mean what if, you meet Lark's people? Good question, don't ask next time. Quote dot dot dot. Keep a distance and don't interfere with each other. After thinking for a long time, Fury could only come up with this plan. What else? Counting until now, he, they only had contact with Lark a few times in total. The results of it, more than a hundred elite agents died, three capable generals were captured, and billions of dollars were spent to redeem, one. Thinking of this, he wanted to go crazy, billions of dollars. Do you know how many bases that is? Do you know how many times I have to cheat the council to earn back? Do you know how many G's can be recruited? Fury took a deep breath. Calm down, calm down, you are the king of secret agents, the guardian in the dark, the leader of the world's largest violent organization, you must have a big picture. Fury waved his hand, and before leaving, he put on a smile again, and said kindly to Natasha, in case you meet someone from Lark, you are responsible for negotiating with them. That's it use me as a cushion. Natasha readily agreed. No problem. Coulson kept smiling the whole time, with a feeling of being indifferent to the world, and the real feeling is that being calm and calm is the real feeling. The two left the office, Natasha went to the medical department, it was not a good idea to go on a mission injured, and Coulson went to form a new team. His entire army was wiped out last time, and there was not one left. Not long after the two left, Fury called Rumlow over again and asked him to go to the North Pole. A Russian oil team was in the North Pole, and it was suspected that they had discovered the bomber that Captain America was driving back then. Between, confirmed mysterious items, and, suspected Captain America, the former is obviously more important. Between the new celebrity and the die-hard supporter, it's obvious who to send to the North Pole. Very reasonable arrangement. Rumlow's expression at that time was wonderful, and so was Fury's expression. It wasn't until a year later that he realized that being wonderful is not the same as being wonderful. Rumlow took the order to leave. Fury put his hands on his chest and let out a long breath, ha, huh, finally finished the matter. After a while, the trajectory of the fingers gradually blurred, and the zipper was invaded by unknown forces, and it slipped down a little bit. Xiao He, come in quickly. In the evening, Tony took Pepper home after the examination and started his most panicked stage. How is this water? Is the temperature suitable? Do you want some honey? Is this steak tender enough? Is there too much salt? Would you like some more vegetables? When it was time to go to bed, I ran to the bedroom in person to check whether the floor was slippery and so on. As soon as Luck sat down, he was stuffed with dog food before even using his knife and fork. In the end, he had to leave angrily, saying that he wanted to find his own tenderness. When we walked out of the villa, the full moon hung high in the sky, the moonlight was as beautiful as frost, and the white flowers swayed with the breeze. The waves crashed on the beach, and the calls of seagulls could be heard from time to time. Everything is so beautiful, the world still loves me. Ouch, locks, anger, that had just been extinguished was ignited again, and he started the car and kicked the accelerator, got out of the manor. The license plate is ordinary. I, Rack Stark, tonight, to hit 10. 
As soon as he stepped out of Long Island and stepped into the border of Queens, Rucker regretted it. Today is the federal payday every two weeks, and the streets are full of people who come out to shop and celebrate after get off work. Vehicles filled the streets, and there was no movement for a long time. Bad traffic conditions, even if billionaires come, they have to wait honestly. I felt the world's deep malice towards me. Luck looked around and turned on the turn signal, intending to park the car on the side of the road. In the dilapidated car behind, the dark-skinned young man braked suddenly, and the new mobile phone fell out of his hand and fell to the ground, the screen cracked on the spot. Crack, he exploded in a flash, and regardless of whether he was playing with his cell phone while driving or what kind of car was in front of him, he stepped on the accelerator and hit it directly. Boom, bang, the huge noise quickly attracted the people around, and they became even more excited after seeing clearly that the car that rear-ended Rambo was a broken car. Many people have already taken out their mobile phones to record and are ready to post it on social platforms at any time. Lark couldn't see the back, thinking that he didn't pay attention to the turn, he pulled up the handbrake, looked in the rearview mirror, and took out his wallet from the space. The other party's car is not expensive, and it can be solved directly by spending some money. Xiaohe felt sorry for the phone, so he bent over immediately. Lock patted the window of the dilapidated car, maintaining the attitude that the perpetrator should have, and said humbly, sorry, I didn't pay attention to the turn just now. Do you know how to drive? Don't you know how to turn on the turn signal when turning? People like you should go to hell. Xiao He touched his cell phone and started cursing without raising his head. Turn signal, Lark frowned and took out his phone. The little black man slapped his phone twice. Unexpectedly, the screen of his phone went completely black. He looked up and became even more angry when he saw a super handsome guy opposite him. He stuck his head out of the window, his lips fluttered, lighting up his racial skills, you dare to call me a nigga, see you in court, racism. As soon as these words came out, Locke frowned even deeper. He didn't expect to meet such a guy just because he was stuck in a traffic jam. He took a step back, avoiding the flying saliva, and snapped his fingers under everyone's strange eyes. Snapped. Wow, this handsome guy is out of luck. Indeed, some lawyers are willing to help with racial discrimination for free, alas. But I just saw my eldest brother's car with its lights on, and the ugly guy was playing with his phone. A six or seven year old girl in the crowd said crisply, holding her mother's hand. She is about six or seven years old, with a very cute bun on her head, and her eyes are round and big like a bow. She was wearing a bright yellow skirt and a small bow tie bag hanging on her waist. Seeing her, Lark instantly understood what a caring little padded jacket and, cheat, life daughter series are. The younger girls around were already full of care, and couldn't help but want to go up and hug her. Hearing someone trying to make trouble, Xiaohe glanced over with a malicious look. He opened his mouth, revealing a mouthful of rotten teeth, kids, you, cough cough. Several black suits suddenly rushed out of the alley, and the three stood behind Locke to block the little girl's view. The next scene was not suitable for her to see. The remaining two grabbed it with their big hands, and Xiao He was strangled by the neck without any resistance, his eyelids were turned up, and his thick palms were slowly exerting force. Crack, the sound was very small and weak, and only Locke and the others could hear it. The black suit leaned over and whispered, Boss, it's settled. Lark gave the little girl a thumbs up, and tilted his head slightly, understood, deal with him, and drive my car away. Yes, yes, the lights were dim, the man in a black suit opened the car door, hugged Xiaohe and laughed like an old friend after a long time. He naturally started the car and loudly said that he was going to drink. The other two got into the Rambo and followed behind. The onlookers also dispersed. This luxury car with bodyguards is not easy at first glance, so it's better not to cause trouble. As for Xiao He, didn't you go drinking with friends? Well, why didn't you two leave? Locke turned around and let out a small, huh. With their short heads and square heads, they looked exactly the same. Sure enough, the two of them said in unison, Boss, the manager asked us to be your bodyguards and deal with the sundries. Winston considered that his boss was young and handsome, and looked kind. If he didn't have a few bodyguards behind him, he would be easily, being, bullied. What happened just now is an example. If the two of them were there just now, 
when Xiao He uttered the first swear word, his head would probably have exploded. It was a rare time to come out, and Lop didn't want to spoil his mood again, he nodded, okay, then you two will follow behind me. The two pursed their lips at the same time, squared their heads, and looked naive, good boss. Pretty neat, hee <laughs> hee, mom, these two uncles are so fun. The little girl covered her mouth and sniggered, her big eyes raised slightly like crescent moons, and she was even cuter than before. Her mother, a beautiful woman in an off-white dress with a slightly pale complexion, hurriedly picked up the little girl and apologized. I'm sorry, the kid is a little lively. She definitely doesn't mean any harm. Lark quickly explained that if he slowed down a bit, he would really turn into a bully and go out and rob civilian girls, especially since there were two evil servants behind him. Relax, relax, I'm not a bad person, as you saw just now, I was the first to take out the card, and I'm ready to deal with it properly. The beautiful woman stopped talking and looked at Lark, such a sunny and handsome young man should not be able to lie to others. She was still hesitating, but the little girl in her arms suddenly put her arms around her neck, and whispered in her ear, Mom, I don't think this big brother is a bad person, and he smells good. Really, the little girl pouted and nodded vigorously, yeah. Ha, huh, that's fine. The beautiful woman actually believed it. She put the little girl down and apologized again. I'm sorry, I misunderstood you just now. It's nothing. You should be vigilant when you go out. Lark made a joke. Judging from the direction they were traveling, he guessed they were going to Brooklyn, pointed at the two square heads behind him, and said. I can give you a ride wherever you want to go. The security situation in Queens is, well, it's a little bit worse. If this sentence is heard by people in Queens, they will definitely jump out and say how is it possible. We have obviously been ranked fourth three times in a row, and whether we have been ranked third twice in a row is good or not. If you don't know, don't lie. Translated to any city in the East, this result would definitely be outstanding. But it's different in New York. After all, as we all know, there are only five districts in New York. Except for Manhattan, they are all scum. The beautiful woman also knows that it is indeed more dangerous for a woman to take her child through a place like Queens at night. If you are escorted by this bodyguard, there is absolutely no problem with safety. Thank you, please, it's a small matter, I'm on the way anyway. Locke raised his hand, indicating that women should be the priority. Yeah, big brother is so nice. The little girl jumped up and gave Locke a high five, then ran to the front and waved happily, Mom, let's go. Be careful, I know, the little girl is like a happy butterfly, running back and forth between the flower beds. Her short legs seem to be tireless and she flies very fast. For this reason, Locke had to let a square head look in front of him, and it would be bad if he bumped into it. After walking for a while, Locke asked, By the way, I don't know your name. The beautiful woman's weak and strong voice came, Eleanor Bishop, in front is my daughter, Kate Bishop. After some conversation, they left immediately. Some days later. Is this the boss who has traveled through time and experienced countless lives and deaths? Lark's heart was filled with turmoil. This sentence was translated. My big goal is to protect the earth. Under this, dead people are no big deal, especially those black. Cough cough, the last sentence is the central idea of his own summary. Guyi said so which is equivalent to not pursuing his previous behavior of killing people and devouring souls. After thinking about this, Lark straightened his back again and felt that the dragon bone tea on the table was more fragrant than ever before. He raised the cup with both hands and turned on the flattery mode. My lord is worthy of being the number one supreme mage in the past and present. My admiration for you is like a surging river, endless. Sao Cheng Guadu squeezed out all the words that could be thought of in his mind but Ji Yu Yi just looked at him with a smile, his eyes seemed to say. That's a good compliment, let's have some more. I'm shocked, I didn't expect you to be such a person. Lark had no choice but to bite the bullet and replace wine with tea. My lord, I offer you a toast. Gudong, Gudong. Ha, good tea. As soon as the teacup is put down and the sleeves are wiped, the atmosphere is in place. Before the tea was finished, the life force in it was absorbed and digested by the power of the dragon, which shocked him slightly. The crisis is over, and now it's time to get down to business. I'm not here just to deliver goods to your door, eat and chat. 
The three temples form a protective net on the surface of the earth to prevent the dark side from penetrating. Even if there are a few fish that slip through the net, they cannot escape the pursuit of the mage. Of course, this was just Luck's guess. He didn't know the specific situation, so he could only ask in the most tactful tone possible. Your Majesty, I met a demon in Monaco some time ago. He seemed to be connected with a human organization to carry out some, um, operations in the underworld. After speaking, Locke turned the teacup, pretending to be listening attentively. Discover mysterious energy, strength, 800 inches. Is it absorbed? Yes, what a fart. I also want to see the sun tomorrow. You have to ask yourself what you did. I, G U pushed the teacup onto the table, and the water mist rose into the air to form a mirror. After a few flickers, the picture began to appear. Dense golden lines extend from the three huge shields, wrapping the entire earth. Every time a black mist hits it, the lines burst into light, destroying them. Why don't you show me this? Lark was puzzled, he knew that this was the magic net formed by the mage temple. Look carefully, at this time, the picture quickly reversed, the black mist reappeared and disappeared into the void, the magic network returned to dimness, the earth rotated in the opposite direction, the sun set and rose again. After reciprocating for an unknown number of times, the picture stabilized. Just like before, the magic network worked diligently to block the black mist. Suddenly, a wailing cry spread across the universe from the Asian plate, the northern position of the rooster, tearing a crack in the magic network. More than a dozen wisps of black mist took the opportunity to get in. The video screen ends here, and the water mist falls back into the cup, emitting a refreshing fragrance. Ji Yu Yi took a sip of tea and said calmly, Do you see clearly? See clearly. What do you think should be done? Law's body is the body of the venerable, but by driving, there is absolutely no two minds. Sophistry is meaningless, Lark directly shouldered the responsibility. Ji Yu Yi nodded in satisfaction, it's good to be brave. But I don't know much about demons. Finding them by myself is like looking for a needle in a haystack. I don't know if His Holiness can help. In addition, I also want to ask His Holiness to create two pendants. As mentioned before, Shenlong's mind contains resentment that cannot be transcended for tens of thousands of years, and is purified and filtered out by gems as dregs. For the time being, Lark only had a half-baked set of boxing skills. He had cleared most of the information about himself from the internet before, and he wasn't worried if the demons just possessed ordinary people. But, everyone knows what happened in Monaco. Rucker is naturally not afraid of Hydra, but Tony and Pepper are not, and the latter is also pregnant. It's impossible for him to stay by their side 24 hours a day. At this time, it is especially important to protect the magic weapon. In case, Tony would go crazy. This guy is good, he is indeed the one I like. Ji Yu Yi looked at Lark in front of him with a smile, he just felt that the more he looked at him, the more he could retreat earlier, it would be pleasing to the eye. Master Wong will be stationed in New York to cooperate with you in eliminating demons, the pendant is simple, and Ulu metal with keel is the most suitable for you, do you have any questions? I want to learn magic from you. The two most important things were solved, and Lark focused on strengthening his strength. Now the Yumin Ji gem is more of a supporting role, Shenlong has not fully digested it, he has the power of a dragon, and he does not know how to use it. Ji Yuyi seemed to have expected it. He waved his fan lightly and three or four ancient books appeared on the table detailed explanation of basic magic, how to use energy, portals, and astral projection. Lark is a person who knows things, so he naturally knows that the most important ones are the first two. He can't wait to pick them up and read them. He doesn't want to be slapped back by the fan as soon as he reaches out. Snapped. You don't understand that you need to pay tuition first to become a disciple. There is also the material fee and handling fee for making the pendant, not a penny less. Ji Yuyi fanned, his face hidden behind his back smiling like an old fox. Before Locke could speak, she waved her hand, and the gift box and teacup disappeared in place, that's a teacher apprenticeship ceremony, it doesn't count. I didn't want to become a disciple, but you must be too skilled in this move. Locke pressed down the slot and climbed up the pole, teacher, I can give you as much money as you want. I am short of everything, but I am not short of money. There is a planet 0.5 light years away from the Earth, 
full of gold. Hiss, I'm convinced, tell me what you want me to do. For the first time, Lark experienced the fear of being dominated by money. Ji Yuyi put away his smile and threw out a few mysterious items. Locke estimated that if he added the one in his hand, it would correspond to exactly 1000 energy values. Don't worry, you can strengthen these first. You will understand what I mean later. With doubts, Locke took out his mysterious item from the space, and started, body strengthening, in front of Ji Yuyi. Both left and right can't be beaten, there's no difference. The mysterious objects disappeared one after another, the golden light in the body accelerated and was compressed into a liquid, the control of the dragon's power rose sharply, and there was a crackling sound from the body. Opposite me, Ji Yuyi has been staring at the gem on his chest. The hand placed under the table forms an afterimage. The orange-red light shines brightly and disappears when it is about to overflow the table. After a while, the light ball exploded with a bang and Ji Yuyi skillfully drew a circle under the table with one hand to open the portal, threw the riotous energy ball in and immediately closed it. Then pretend nothing happened and continued to drink tea, the moon is really round tonight. Discovered mysterious energy, strength 900, 3000, 50,000, dot 100,000, dot 200,000. What kind of plane is this old woman Ji Yuyi doing? Is she going to destroy New York? Do you want to open your eyes and see? Forget it, forget it, I'll just do my job honestly. Lark's eyelids twitched, and he finally stabilized himself. In a dark and cramped space, several monsters were kneeling on the ground, and opposite a terrifying creature with two horns and towering into the sky through a black object. Promise to that group of humans, when the crack opens, they will perish. An orange halo suddenly appeared above the monster's head, and the energy cluster exploded, and the monster turned into particles and dissipated between heaven and earth. Ancient One With the disappearance of the last mysterious item, the remaining balance is only a fraction, and in exchange for an unprecedented sense of power, the physical body has a faint pain due to the increase in energy in a short period of time. If he came two more times, he might become the first traverser to stretch himself to death. The cumulative energy consumption reaches, and the energy transfer function is turned on. Ignoring the panel, Lark moved his body twice, took out the keel from the space, cut off a piece and placed it on the table. After thinking about it, he cut off a larger piece. My lord, can you help me build a horizontal knife by the way, and the cost will be settled together. Can. G. U. Yi nodded. To others, Uru metal was very rare and could only be found once in a thousand years, to her, it was just like that, three to five tons easily. She put away the keel and pushed the books over. Lark knew that it was time to pay the tuition and immediately put the things away. After preparations were completed, Ji Yuyi took out two hanging rings and put them on his left and right hands respectively. He pulled his hands apart, and the clear sound of glass shattering sounded, covering the two of them. The bright moon in the sky disappeared, the world fell into darkness, and there was a foul smell in the air. Lark just took a breath and felt dizzy. What kind of poison is this, even an extraordinary body can't stop it. Locke covered his mouth and nose, and used the power of the dragon to form a protective film on his body. Snapped. With a snap of his fingers, the space suddenly lit up. Hiss. Lark gasped. Corpses, countless large and small, strangely shaped corpses, including palm-sized insects with wings on their backs, orcs with heads and horses, monsters the size of mountains with eight legs in their abdomens, further away, there are various gases floating faintly. Discover mysterious energy, strength, 300 inches. Discover mysterious energy, strength, 400 inches. Didi, Didi, hundreds of prompts popped up in an instant, and the panel was directly shut down and automatically closed. The scene was so shocking that Locke drained the air of the earth before he came back to his senses. He turned his head blankly, and then backed away in fright. Your Majesty, what's the situation? Ji Yuyi was wearing a black robe at the moment, with a black mark in the middle of his forehead, and his eyes were as black as ink without any emotion, like a peerless demon king. Dang dang stare, what is going on with Ji Yuyi, depraved, blackened into this appearance, Mephisto is not as good as you. Gudong. Lark quickly scanned the surroundings trying to find a way to leave, every second of staying here was a torment. After a while, he approached Ji Yuyi honestly and cautiously, and asked tentatively, Master Ji Yuyi, are you okay? 
Supreme Venerable. Fortunately, Ji Yuyi was not completely swallowed by the darkness, and she woke up quickly when she heard someone calling her. With both hands, the black mist on his body was suppressed into his body in the blink of an eye, and his eyes reappeared. I am fine. Ha, huh, it's fine, it's fine. Locke quietly retracted the iron rod behind him into the space, pretending nothing happened, walked to the mountain of corpses, and pointed with his big hand, then I started. Okay. Three hours later, Lakel collapsed on the ground, gasping for fresh air. 500, he absorbed a total of 500 corpses, walked dozens of kilometers, his legs were numb, and all this was just a drop in the ocean for the sea of corpses. The results are also gratifying, with the energy value reaching an unprecedented 200,000. How many demons and monsters have there been in Giyuyi for so many years? They are so pitiful, Luck panted heavily and asked. Sir, Venerable, I have absorbed everything I can absorb. What are you doing now? These monsters and demons are also divided into grades, and he cannot absorb those beyond a certain limit. The last time Shenlong Sholao was purely unlucky and triggered the protection mechanism of the gemstone. It is eaten dry and wiped clean, and served in a pot. Ji Yuyi didn't know when he brought the table in, took a sip of dragon bone tea and a sip of pastries. After they were warmed up, he fanned them to make sure they didn't feel too comfortable. Lark, doesn't your heart ache? Ji Yuyi stood up and left his seat, and everything behind him disappeared. She patted Lark on the shoulder and praised. Well done, please report to me if you have anything to do in the future. Does it work? Of course, they will flock to you and never leave you. Forget it, I still want to live for two more days. Don't be poor, I'm tired too. Please finish your work and rest early. Ji Yu Yi put away his fan, and took out a silver metal can with mysterious patterns painted on it like magic. Clasp your hands and put in the energy you just absorbed. Oh, Locke reluctantly took it, and a prompt popped up on the panel immediately. Energy storage device detected, whether to transfer energy. Yes, with a thought, surging energy poured into the metal tank along the arms, and the balance flew down 3,000 feet, faster than the rush. Locke's heart aches, he earned these from the sea of corpses step by step, and now they are all gone in the blink of an eye. The BGM seemed to ring in my ears. The sky is blue, and there are paper cranes outside the window. After a while, the energy bottomed out, and the surface of the metal can was covered with a layer of gleaming light. Out of sight and out of mind, Locke threw it casually, I'll give it back to you. Ji Yuyi carefully took it and raised his hand to hit him. Finally, considering that he still needed to be a tool, he kicked him out of the space with a wave of his hand. The magic weapon will be picked up in three days. The mirror space is not suitable for the next thing. Ji Yuyi waved his hand again to open the portal. After stepping in, the yellow sand in the sky rushes towards your face, and a huge circle surrounds the entire planet in the distant sky. She found a cave sheltered from the wind, and kept taking out textured materials from the mirror space and placing them around. When everything was ready, she took out the metal can and sat cross-legged. With a light throw, the metal tank floats in front of him, and the glow lights up the space. Ji Yuyi put his hands together, made a few seals at random, and the unknown, pure light blue energy stored in the jar poured into his body along his arms. The black substance under the skin was quickly pushed to the same location. When the whole tank of energy was used up, her right forearm had returned to normal. Ji Yuyi thought for a moment, put away all the items in the cave, opened the portal, and walked into the dark world. Mephisto, I'm here to negotiate terms. A circle of light suddenly appeared on the empty street. Before he could stand still, Locke took out his peaked cap and put it on, observing the surrounding environment. Familiar lights, the sanctuary door is closed. Ha, huh, luckily there is no one. Lark put away his hat, took out the car from the space and left. Don't bother the king so late, there will be plenty of time in the future. After returning to the hotel and briefly chatting with Winston, Lark spent the night boxing in the room to become familiar with the surge of dragon power. Just as sleepless as him was Tony. In the evening, he was busy working inside and outside and had no time to think. Now that it was quiet, all kinds of thoughts came to his mind. He tossed and turned and couldn't fall asleep. He put on his shoes, took the red wine from the restaurant, and planned to talk to his brother about his life, but the room was empty, and Jarvis reminded Lark to go back to the hotel. 
He went to Hawkeye again, but there was no one. Happy snored so loudly that he couldn't wake him up. In the end, he could only sit on the roof with the wine alone, listening to the chirping of seagulls. On the way, two shadow panthers smelled the smell of wine and jumped upstairs, so the three guys got together at a table, eating and drinking. Three days later, it was just dawn, and Locke drove a pickup truck from the hotel, crossed the Brooklyn Bridge, circled around and stopped in front of the Holy of Holies gate. Hey, didn't you activate the hidden formation today? Locke pressed the horn in doubt, and soon the king's voice came from the Holy of Holies. Drip, I'm coming. The door opened, and Wong, wearing a blue and gray apron around his neck, held a mop in his thick hands, and the floor behind him was shining. Seeing that it was Locke, he was surprised, opened another door, and waved, you came so early, come in quickly. Locke got out of the car and said with a smile, you are much better than me. You get up so early to clean up. Unlike me, I feel uncomfortable every morning without sleeping in. Everyone loves to be recognized, praised and affirmed. Wong laughed, showing Chinese modesty. Where, where, it's mainly because I'm used to it. Lark walked to the truck, lifted the black cloth, revealing two huge packing boxes, Stark Cleaning Robot, Exclusive Edition. He patted the box and inadvertently expressed his identity as a local tyrant. I saw that the Holy of Holies was very large, and it would be very troublesome to clean it. I randomly installed two of the company's new products this morning. I heard they are very useful. I don't know if you will like them. Wang's eyes sparkled. He had been fascinated by this robot for a long time, but Stark's products were notoriously expensive. It took him two years to save a third of it, and he couldn't even afford it secondhand. He was ready to give up, but he didn't expect to receive two at once. He rubbed his hands and walked over quickly, looking around the package and looking at it, I like it very much. You don't know that I have wanted to buy it for a long time, especially after every training or after returning from a mission. Understood, I don't want to move after exercising, I just want to lie in bed until I grow old. The packaging is not as good as a machine, and two people work together to remove the box from the car and carry it into the Holy of Holies. Wong quickly closed the door, and trotted to move chairs and make tea for Locke. After finishing these tasks, he immediately took out a knife to unpack the package, and at the same time answered one of Locke's doubts. The teacher told me not to be too polite to you. If you have any needs, just ask. Anyway, you are a rich man and you don't need this little money. Lark, haha, teachers are really good at judging people. Of course, whenever the teacher makes a mistake in so many years, he can always control those dimensional demons. It can be seen that it is really dead. Locke recalled now that the corpse he saw in the mirror space that day still felt a chill down his spine. The black and ancient one is too terrifying. Locke took a sip of hot tea to suppress his discomfort. Wong turned himself into a small expert at unpacking, and unpacked the package in twos and threes. An off-white robot that was half a man tall and had two sticks on its arms appeared in front of him. Wong already knew how to use it. With a few voice commands, the robot started, planned its route, and the chassis began to mop the floor. Lark picked up the bench to get out of the way. In fact, this is just a mopping robot, nothing special. Comfortable, Wong Kaixin took off the apron put it away with the mop, then called Locke, and the two walked upstairs together. In the attic with the Holy of Holies logo on the window, there are three wooden boxes, two small and one long, on the table. The two sat down, and Lark took the lead in opening the small box. This is a thumb-sized pendant in the shape of a water drop. The whole body is silvery white with a metallic luster, and there is a small hole at the top. In terms of appearance alone, it is exactly the same as the $5 necklace at the roadside stall. Here I go, it's Uru metal. Wong subconsciously exclaimed, and immediately realized that he looked very ignorant, straightened his body, and said lightly, not bad magic weapon. It's just that the envy in his eyes can't be hidden. Locke chuckled. It's just Uru metal, the magic weapon of Master Wong must also be made of this material. Wong, yes, yes. The king was defeated by Versailles. Now I see Locke picking up the pendant, thinking that he has no magic power on him, and brushing his hair with his hand. It's time for me to play. Ahem, Lark, this thing is called a magic weapon. As the name suggests, it requires mana and magic power to be driven. No. Is this what you're talking about? Locke's eyes were micron, 
with a simple smile on his face, his hands radiated golden light, the runes on the pendant were activated, and he began to crazily absorb the power of the dragon, and a huge shield appeared in the air. As more and more energy is absorbed, the shield turns from imaginary to real, and the mysterious lines on the surface are clearly visible. Locke moved the pendant, and the shield moved accordingly and hit the table with a, boom. Hiss. What is the origin of, little junior brother? The power in his body is so strong. Wong suddenly felt that he had lived like a dog for so many years. But in order to maintain his stable image, he gritted his teeth and said, it's not bad, it can barely catch up to the level before I was injured. No way, who told me to practice for only half a year? Locke shook his head, pretending to be disappointed, opened another pendant, and injected energy into it. Both arms light up at the same time, making him look like a golden man. Wong, please stop, swearing, I know I'm wrong. Ulu Metal has an excellent fit for energy, and coupled with the keel matched with the power of the dragon, its upper limit of energy storage has been greatly enhanced. It took Lark a full three minutes to recharge. He put the pendant back into the box and put it into the space, ready to give it to Tony and Pepper when he got home. Now, it's my weapon's turn. Locke took a deep breath, and pulled the two-meter-long, 30-centimeter wide wooden box in front of him. Weapons made of ordinary metal cannot contain the power of the dragon. If the weapon is force-infused, it may break or explode on the spot. The Taedao at the auction was specially made by Tony. The back of the sword was hollow, and keel powder was put into it, so it could withstand his two swings. Last time in Monaco, Luck suffered the disadvantage of not having a weapon and almost escaped from that demon. Locke opened the box, grabbed the integrated black, wooden board, inside, held the scabbard and pulled it out, a black as ink, plain horizontal knife came into view. Yaosho, what kind of ecstasy soup did you pour into the teacher? She was actually willing to use Uru metal to make a knife for you. Wong looked at the wooden stick tied to his waist and fell into deep thought. Lark raised his head. King, is there any news about the devil now? Wong lowered his head and said weakly. No, I don't know why, since three days ago, all the demons have been hidden suddenly and their fluctuations cannot be sensed. Locke had no choice but to put away the hangdao, and it seemed that he would have to unseal the hangdao next time. Okay, then I'll go back and deal with the magic weapon before I come to you. Wong got up and saw them off. No matter what, everyone will be his own in the future, and this must be polite. Rucker drives away in his pickup, passing a black SUV as he passes the Brooklyn Bridge. Rumlow raised his head, looked at the faraway vehicle in the rearview mirror, and said in surprise, Lark Stark. Why is he driving a pickup truck? Is he bankrupt? The bald man in charge of driving hesitated and said, Leader, I don't think it's possible. Rumlow rolled his eyes, angrily saying, Nonsense, you still need to tell me, drive your car properly. At this time, a fierce man in a black suit in the back seat licked his lips, Gia Gia Gia, team leader, what if we really find Captain America in the North Pole this time? He bites the word Captain America very hard. All those present were his own people who didn't need to cover up, Rumlow rubbed the handle of the gun, and said mockingly, what should we do? Of course it's a grand funeral, the national flag covers the coffin, and a few badges are given symbolically. Is it possible to be alive after being frozen for decades? Quote, ha ha, the team leader is right, he is not a monster. I'm kind of looking forward to seeing his body. A popsicle is about the same. Fierce and vicious, please lend me the corpse. During the conversation, the SUV drove into a secret airport. Several SUVs of the same model were parked inside, and a dozen men in black were carrying equipment one after another. Seeing a car coming in, Coulson raised his head and smiled, continuing to discuss the details of the mission with Natasha. Although it was just a simple smile, Rumlow felt his scalp go numb. He always felt that Coulson's whole body changed drastically after waking up, but he didn't know how to describe it for a while. Silence, fear, after a hurried greeting, Rumlow and his men boarded another military plane and flew directly to a base near the North Pole. They don't have a black tech energy source like the arc reactor. The Quinjet is quiet enough but lacks range, so they can only turn around. Natasha looked at the plane disappearing into the sky, and teased, Agent Coulson, during your absence, Rumlow replaced you as the director's right-hand man. How do you feel about that? 
Without raising his head, Coulson ticked the tablet. Isn't it a good thing that someone can share the director's worries, and it was Agent Rumlow who carried me back from the hotel. I am very grateful to him. Coulson's tone was very calm, as if he was describing something that had nothing to do with him. After finishing speaking, he closed the tablet and smiled at Natasha. It's time to board the plane. Locke drove the pickup truck back to the hotel, but found that the door was full of trucks, and a dozen workers were moving furniture and other objects inside. Happy ran here and there with the tablet, sweating profusely from work. Be careful, this is a 19th century European royal vase, the only one in the world, don't break it. Hey, five of you don't move this piano, put it aside and wait for the machine to come over, first lift that sofa up. The entrance to the underground garage was blocked. Locke parked on the side of the road, went to the supermarket to buy two bottles of frozen drinks, and walked to the hotel door and threw a bottle to Happy. What's going on, is Tony going to move? Lark just didn't return to the manor for three days, so he didn't even forget everything at home. What could be more important than having a sip of ice cream on a scorching summer day? Happy inserted the tablet into his waist, unscrewed the bottle cap and turned it left. The dark brown liquid spun quickly and formed a vortex. He raised his hand and stuffed it. Grr, in just five seconds, he drank a 500 milliliters bottle of Coke. Hi, cool. Happy hiccuped and came alive instantly. He patted Jujugai's stomach and said, Boss, your coke came too timely. I feel like I was almost burnt just now. The sun at 12 o'clock is really hard. Happy hiccuped again, and answered the question just now. Boss Tony said that the manor is too far away from the hospital, which is inconvenient, so he plans to move to a hotel for a temporary stay. Are they coming? Upstairs. Okay. I understand, you can get on with your work. Lark handed him the unopened drink and turned around to walk into the hotel. Needless to say, the public elevator has been requisitioned by workers. Lark took the employee elevator and went straight to the top of the building. There was constant ping-pong-pong along the way, and Haytham's roar could be heard through the wall. What is scarier than a couple in love? Answer. A rich and powerful man who conceived before marriage. After getting out of the elevator, another group of workers came oncoming in the corridor. Locke was completely speechless. You are not moving. The decoration of the new house is not as outrageous as you. On the rooftop, in the newly built awning, Tony hugged Pepper and whispered something. Pepper, do you like boys or girls? Tony has been in love for decades, and he has never seen such a big storm. This is a sub-question. I like them all, why don't you have twins? I learned this word from the internet yesterday. Pepper. I like girls, but boys, I am afraid that I will imitate you. When I was in college, I suddenly ran home one afternoon and said, Mom, you are going to be a grandma, so you are not happy. The sense of spectacle was so great that Tony couldn't help but laugh. PFF. It's okay. Tony has plenty of money and can afford to support him. But if it's really not possible, I, as an uncle, can still help out. It's just that my nephew probably needs to take a break from school for a while to practice boxing with me. Tony, do you have any objections? Locke walked to the sofa and sat down, jokingly said. On the left, Pepper tilted his head to look at it, and on the opposite side, Lark folded his arms and waited for the scene. Tony had to choose to be sorry for his unborn son. I'm responsible for soaking him in dragon bone water. PFF. This time it was Pepper who didn't hold back her smile and lay on Tony's shoulder, Tony naturally hugged her and gave his brother a provocative look. See if I have a wife. And you, what do you have? Rucker. Howard, why don't you come out of the coffin and be born again? Humph. With a casual throw, the two wooden boxes fell right into Tony's grasp. You two each have one, and don't take them off even when taking a shower. What, your brother? I worked as a coolie for three hours, what a treasure I earned. Sell yourself, who, snapped. The last blow was made by Pepper. She raised her beautiful eyes and said angrily, how can you say that about Lark? Okay okay, I was wrong, I was wrong. Tony raised his hands and obediently admit defeat. In contrast, he was more curious about what was in the box, and actually made Lark sell himself for three hours to get it. Shield, half an hour is too much. After opening it, there were two exquisitely crafted couples pendants inside, and then, well, they were gone. 
Locke took the pendant and demonstrated it briefly. Under the shocked eyes of the two, he found a rope for them to hang it on. Pepper was careful and noticed that Lark's neck and wrist were empty. She patted Tony, who was bursting with curiosity and had only the pendant in her eyes, and whispered. Lark seems to have given us all the good stuff, and he has nothing. Tony came back to his senses and found that this was indeed the case. Lark didn't even have a watch on him, let alone a pendant. Suddenly, a strong sense of guilt surged into my heart. Locke had paid so much for this family, but I hadn't noticed it all the time, and I still taunted him from time to time. Under the surging emotions, Tony subconsciously ignored the fact that Lark had a portable space. He, popped, the pendant off, put it on the table, and said. Take this, I have Jarvis and the iron suit, nothing will happen. With a mobile phone in his left hand and a watermelon in his right, Locke said casually, it's okay, she also gave me a small knife, which can be used. What can a knife do other than chop vegetables, take it? No, it's enough for me to have a knife. You can wear it yourself. For you, keep it for yourself. For you, keep it for yourself. Tony got a little angry. He slapped the pendant on the table, pretended to be the boss, and said seriously. Wear it. Oh, why don't you believe me? Locke reluctantly put down the watermelon, looked at the top of his head and walked out of the awning, with one hand empty, and the black, wooden board, appeared in his hand. Injecting a little dragon power, Lark held the handle of the knife and waved it casually. Chuck, a giant saber energy five meters long and one meter wide appeared in the air, and flew out in the blink of an eye, cutting off half of the head on the roof of the opposite building. Crack, the sword energy remained unabated and flew far away before dissipating in the air. At this time, the roof that was cut obliquely fell off under the attraction of gravity and fell to the ground. Just as the sun was directly overhead, a black shadow suddenly appeared on the ground. The walker subconsciously raised his head, and then froze on the spot, at a loss. When a crisis strikes, the brains of normal people will be in a state of shutdown, commonly known as being frightened and dumbfounded. People around them shouted, trying to wake them up. Get out of the way, don't stand below. Hurry and hide, the slate is falling. Suddenly, a child pointed to the sky, Mom, what is that? A black spot suddenly appeared in the scorching sun. Just when the stone slab was about to hit the ground, a 10-meter golden knife fell from the sky and split the stone slab into two. Flames burst out from the soles of the armor's feet, quickly accelerated and turned into streamers, flew to the side of the stone slab, and kicked fiercely with both legs. With the overwhelming force coming, the stone slab spun and flew into the building opposite, destroying everything along the way. Boom, crack, 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 boom, now this time is the meal time, the employees of the building come in and out, and meet for lunch. Suddenly, a stone flew from the sky, brushed everyone and hit the wall of the hall, scaring the pretty lady at the front desk into paleness. Several male colleagues scrambled to be the first to come forward to express their greetings, but in the end it was a handsome blonde guy who fought hard to win the beauty with his strong muscles. The people on the street also came to their senses, and they took out their mobile phones and were about to call the police. Happy and Haytham led people out of the hotel to deal with the mess. Seeing that there were no casualties, the culprit Lark controlled the armor to take off and return to the rooftop. Regarding mental damage and other issues, Halson and the others will take care of them. As long as the price is within a reasonable range, everything is fine. If it is unreasonable, Haytham and the others will figure it out. Boom, taking back the armor, Lark, the villain first complained. Tony, look at what's going on with you, and make things like this. You will be responsible for paying for the damage caused. It was settled happily. Lark threw the pot out before anyone else, then patted his butt and returned to the awning to sit down, happily browsing on his phone and eating watermelon. On the same spot, Tony opened his mouth and said, I, 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 for a long time, and finally said, Shet, and stormed back to the awning. Jarvis, I will, I've never seen anyone with such audacity. Pepper watched the whole show without any thought of venting her anger on her man's behalf. The main reason is that there were no casualties, otherwise she would not just sit idly by with her character. The daily task, the routine of giving praise to the young lady on the list ended, Stark too landed on the roof, and Winston, who had disappeared for a long time, came out from it. 
The meticulous hairstyle could not conceal his tired face, and the corners of the handmade suit were slightly raised. Winston walked into the awning, regardless of whether the two bosses were there, sat down directly next to Lark, picked up the ice drink on the table, and took a big gulp. Opposite Tony looked embarrassed and his eyes were wandering. In the end, Pepper was understanding and handed over another bottle of drink. Just like the original work, after the birth of the armor, Tony became the hands-off shopkeeper, and the company's affairs were basically handed over to Pepper. Then, she got pregnant, then, Tony didn't let her go to work and only allowed three hours of video conferencing every day, then, Vice Chairman Winston succeeded in catching the duck and got the title of Dabao. It stands to reason that the matter ends here. Over there, the couple returns the house, and here, there is Winston in the company, hello, me, hello everyone. But what about the Continental Hotel? After the Stark group started to get involved in the smartphone industry, the things that need to be dealt with every day increased exponentially, and Winston couldn't keep up with it alone. After final discussion, it was decided to let Haleson serve as the temporary manager, with Winston providing guidance, and the Jarvis problem was basically solved. Lark asked about the progress of the expo and learned that the invitations had been sent out and the opening ceremony was scheduled for one month later. Dog food and steak for lunch can't hold him back. With the harmonious concept that everyone is a brother from the same school and should be blessed and suffer together, Locke packed a portion of Wagyu and went to Wong for advice on magic. Arctic. The sky was gloomy, and the cold wind wrapped snowflakes whistling and falling. With minus 30 degrees and strong winds, no one dared to stay outside at this time. The rumbling operation of the diesel engine provides a steady stream of heat for the snowmobile, and there are three staff members in red down jackets sitting inside. Through the hazy light of the glass, it can be seen that a huge iron plate about four meters high is inserted obliquely in the snow in front of it, and the tall snowmobiles appear to be half short in front of it. In the distance, the orange signal light circled a large area on the ice along with the hazy figure of the monster under the iceberg. Xiaobai, who likes science fiction the most and has a rich imagination, rubbed his hands and couldn't help but said, Hey, do you think this is really the plane piloted by Captain America back then? It's a legend. The bearded man who recently had a gambling habit shined brightly. I don't care what's in it, I just want to know if the government will give me some bonuses, anyway, from my experience in the army, there is definitely an airplane underneath, maybe it is the gold treasure transported by the German army in those years. Both of them fantasized about it, and both thought it would be the most exciting part of their lives. After a while, the bearded man looked behind him. Old oh, Bai, if you suddenly received a large sum of money, what would you want to do first? Lao Bai's hair was full of silver threads, his hands were in his pockets, and his voice was sonorous and powerful, live. TCH, that's really boring. Yes, yes, the negative remarks immediately prompted a rebuttal from the two. At this moment, a beam of snow white light pierced the darkness and shone on the glass window, and the unique sound of snowmobile tracks could be heard in my ears. Coming. The three of them wrapped up their down jackets, put on their hats, and took the lighting equipment to the car. Lao Bai habitually walked behind the team. The sound of the track stopped, and Rumlo led the people out of the car. The dark black down jacket blended into the environment, making it difficult to see their faces clearly. The orange-red signal lights on the ice in the distance are very eye-catching in the dark night, and Rumlo quickly sketched out a rough shape in his mind, a large plane. Is the introduction true? The idea grew uncontrollably and crazily like a weed. Rumlow took a deep breath, gestured to the evil spirit, and went forward to find out what the three of them had said. Looking fiercely in the direction of the signal light, his tongue licked his lips, his body shook inexplicably, and he immediately returned to the snowmobile. The special agents were divided into two groups, five of them were, on guard, around with guns, ready to kill and silence anyone at any time, the other three drove the snowmobile above the shadow. The truck body is opened and the laser cutter is set up. The task given by Fury clearly stated, suspected to be the bomber that Captain America flew back then, and they naturally made corresponding preparations. Half an hour later, with a bang, a large hole appeared on the ice, and the lighting stick was thrown down fiercely. See, a faint red light illuminated the surroundings, and there was nothing below, and the metal floor gave off a cold light. There is no water seepage, very good. Standing beside him, Rumlow said quietly. 
several armed agents behind him drove on snowmobiles and drove the three of them away. Through chatting, Rumlow successfully learned from Dazuizi Xiaobai that the Russian exploration team that first discovered the plane notified Russia and the Federation of the News respectively. Now that the Russian team is on its way, the trick of killing and silence is useless. I can only drive them away while they don't know what's inside, and wait for someone to go down and investigate quickly. In order to hurry, except for the fierce Rumlow, he sent everyone down. He ran back to the snowmobile by himself, took out the communication device and turned it over to Pierce, ready to press it at any time. Captain America is the most successful super soldier, even if he is dead, his body is of great research value, especially Hydra still has a group of winter soldiers. Although the plane is large, finding the cockpit is a breeze for a group of professional agents. Three minutes later, Captain America, who had been frozen for 70 years, was successfully discovered. Dig, move all the equipment over and dig out the people as quickly as possible. After Rumlow gave the order, he immediately pressed the communicator. After a few seconds, Pierce's sullen voice came from the opposite side. Rumlow, it's three o'clock in the morning. I hope you can give me a reasonable explanation. Rumlow glanced out the window, not worried about the threat in his words at all. Director, I found the body of Captain America. There was a sound of something falling on the other end of the phone. Pierce turned up the volume and said anxiously, Are you sure you found the super soldier, Captain America, Steve Rogers? 100% sure, Minister. Pierce was not dazzled by the surprise. He knew that it was Fury who sent Rumlow to the North Pole. Besides Fury, who else knows this news? Russia, but they are just guessing and have no evidence. Rumlow said with a smirk on his lips, and the people on the mission this time are all our own. The other end of the phone was silent for more than 10 seconds, and then said, you quickly dig out the person, leave some clues for the Russians, and pretend to be held by them. I will send someone to take care of the rest. The reason why Pierce arranged this is really helpless. As long as the Russians went down and took a look, they would know that they had found the body of Captain America. Rather than being secretive, it is better to expose yourself proactively. Then he would send the Winter Soldier to retrieve the body, so as to avoid Rumlow's identity being exposed. The best of both worlds. Understand, Rumlow hung up the phone and ordered to speed up. Half an hour later, two huge pieces of solid ice were caught and placed on the ice. Unexpectedly, there is really Captain America. Rumlow only brought mechanical equipment and did not prepare refrigeration facilities. Fortunately here is the Arctic, ready-made natural refrigerator. So Rumlow simply tied the ice cubes to the roof of the car and drove back directly against the wind and snow. He also thoughtfully turned the captain face up to look at the colorful world outside. When passing by the Russian team, the unique style successfully caught their attention. The Mousy team showed off their wave-drifting skills on the ice field, followed closely, and finally blocked Rumlow outside the shield base and began to shake people. As Fury's new little celebrity, Rumlow called the Deer Chief the moment he got off the car. It took a long time for the video to be connected. I don't know if it was due to the light. Fury's face was a little red and his voice was a little urgent. Quote dot dot dot, Dudu, how is the Rumlow mission going? If you don't get anything, come back quickly. There is a new situation in New York. Rumlow said nothing and pointed the camera directly at the ice on the trailer. Steve's strong muscles were clearly visible. In the video, Fury shook his body forward, said the iconic words, and then bowed like a shrimp, his face turned into a liver color. Mommy Falker, Captain America Steve Rogers, hiss. Quote dot dot dot. Oh, director, you heard me. Crack, get out. As a person who has seen big scenes, Rumlow is expressionless, and even turned down the volume of the microphone intimately. Minister, is he really not Hydra? This time, it took a long time before Fury's face reappeared on the screen. He gritted his teeth and said in a weak voice, hurry back as quickly as possible, I will upgrade and raise your salary. I was blocked by the Russians and couldn't get out of the base. What happened? Quote dot dot dot. There is no refrigeration facility, the black cloth was torn up by the strong wind, and the Russian convoy saw it and chased after it. Maybe it was too painful, but Fury didn't, Magia fake, anymore, told him to stick to the base, and immediately sent someone to help him. After hanging up the phone, the office suddenly fell into silence. 
The dark-skinned guy cleaned up the traces, and Fury held his forehead in thought. Hawkeye, forget it, I don't have such a subordinate, let Coulson go. He has been mentally unstable since he came back last time. Maybe it will be better if he meets his idol and diverts his attention. Beep 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 beep. Dot hey, director, what are your orders? Who's with you? There is important news. Coulson gestured to Natasha, left the team, walked to the edge of the ruins, and said, it's safe, I'm the only one. Transfer the task to Natasha. You should immediately board a military plane and go to the North Pole to meet Rumlow. Fury paused for a moment and then said, Stop meeting your idol, Captain America Steve Rogers. The smiling man Coulson broke through for the first time. He couldn't help but exclaimed, Director, are you telling the truth? We have really found the captain. I didn't lie to you, go now. Okay Director, I'll leave immediately. Coulson hung up the phone, couldn't help but clenched his right hand, said, yes, then trotted to find Natasha, explained the task in a few words, and immediately took a helicopter to the airport. Rumble rumble, what kind of mission is it? After answering the phone, she changed completely. Natasha shook her head and put away the tablet, asking, did you notice anything? This is an old castle located deep in the mountains, ruins, toppled walls, broken bricks, waist-deep weeds, and its original glory has long been lost. Decades have passed, and even if there are clues, they have been buried by nature. How could it be found so quickly? Everyone shook their heads and said there were no clues. Natasha sighed, took out the mosquito repellent, aimed at Shuli's neck and sprayed it, sorry for my peerless appearance. Ah, Captain America's body is important, Fury mobilizes all his strength, and Coulson is expected to arrive before midnight. Base. Rumlow led people to guard outside the refrigerator to ensure that nothing would happen to the big baby. The doctor at the base walked over pushing the cart, stopped him ferociously, put his hands on his waist, and asked, what are you going to do? There is a thermal scanner inside. I want to see if the captain is still alive. According to the temperature in the North Pole at that time, if a person is frozen in an instant, he may still be alive. Old man, you are lying. It's fake, how could it be possible to be alive in such a cold? That's it, shut up, Rumlow snapped, and everyone fell silent. He walked up to the doctor, his eyes were slightly stern, and the moment he opened his mouth, the scars on his face were stretched and deformed, making him look hideous and terrifying, you didn't lie to me. Gudong, really not, this is the medical field. Before he finished speaking, Rumlow stepped aside and opened the door, understood, come in. The doctor didn't think so much, he pushed the car straight in, started the equipment, and Rumlow gestured to the evil spirit, followed behind and closed the door gently. I hope everyone will support it and subscribe more.